Welcome back everyone to a Friday night live stream. This is a special once in a blue moon type of live stream where you have yours truly um, teaching some enameling techniques. So we are in the shop here at Christ Center Ironworks and we are in the fabrication shop side where I have uh, keep my most of my supplies and just right around this table here. And Roy, would you like to say hello to all the fine people? <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everyone. Welcome to the night of horrors that this live stream is going to be. <laughs> so uh, we're going to do our best this evening. First off, let every if everybody in the chat could let me know whether I'm coming in loud and clear and Jessica as well. And hopefully the visuals are OK and uh, all that good stuff. If you let me know that in the chat. Be greatly appreciated. Oh, <laughs> Roy grew some long hair. Yeah. Royzilla sure did. <laughs> so, but uh, yeah, so it ought to be fun. You guys will have to bear with me. Um, I'm having some technical big finger problems. You know, calluses don't like touch screens and whatnots. So um, that was just some of our problems. So hopefully we'll have a really good strong stream this evening. And uh, it's good to see everybody in here. So I'll shout out a few people here real quick. And uh, while you prepare your stuff and get ready, let's see here. Gordon Farmer, hello this evening. Wiley Rook Blade Works, hello. Bar Run Forge, Brute Lemon, Random Goat, Christopher Fay, Eric, Rob Ho, I mean Huff, <laughs> Shane L Lalonde, I believe, Wayne Heinz. Ryan Jones and Walter Duggar, thank you guys for being here. Um, thank you for showing up in this stream. That is awesome. So Jessica's going to be doing a little bit of the demonstration. Jessica's going to be doing all the demonstration tonight. She's going to be working on some copper bowls and enameling them and filling your all's minds with all sorts of good rhetoric. Over to me. <laughs> Um, yes, I will give you guys kind of a uh, quick rundown. <laughs> a little distracted by Roy with his crab arms right now. <laughs> you all right over there, Roy? <laughs> Roy's never all right. <laughs> Roy's never all right. Okay, well, in that case, I'll keep going. Um, let's see, to begin, and I will get my bowls out here in a moment. Uh, to begin, I started with some thin uh, copper sheet, which I think was 22 gauge. Um, I don't have any of my big plates sitting here at the moment, but uh, I had a couple extra that I cut up if anybody wanted to try some. Um, they're like 8 by 10 so there's a link down below if you want to try some of this at some point. Um, but what I did is I just cut it into a square because I'm doing square bowls. And then I sanded the edges down so they weren't there wasn't any meat hooks or anything where Catch your fingers and then I used a um, nylon mallet to forge it into a swedge depression and that is how I got my bowl shapes so I don't know if you can see it behind me there's a little tiny crock pot right about there and um, I have a cleaner in it uh, that's called Sparex number two and it's specifically for cleaning copper gold and silver and um, it, it could be used cold but it works a little faster if it's in a heated up that's why I'm using it in a crock pot and I only use it for that purpose, so it's not contaminating anything. And um, so I'm gonna go ahead and grab out a piece. That'll have the copper mostly clean, and I'm going to dip it in a, just some water to rinse it off and uh, lightly brush it with a Scotch-Brite um, scrub pad to make sure the surface is good and clean. And then we will begin our enameling process. Cool. I'd also like to thank Alice Harvey for a $4.99 super chat. Thank you very much for that. It's greatly appreciated. Everyone give a round of applause for Alice Harvey. And if I'm not mistaken, I believe Gordon Farmer was in here earlier with a $2.50 uh, super chat as well. So uh, give Gordon Farmer a round of applause. He is always our early, early super chatter. All right, I am just double checking here, making sure the trivet I have out will be the right fit. Um, so again, just got this bit of green um, Scotch-Brite pad here. 
and removing any uh, residue. Sometimes when you clean copper, um, like in a pickling bath, that leaves kind of a, a little bit of oxide on the surface, but wipes off real easily. And so we just want to get that off. Okay, so there we go. I'll come back over here a little closer where you guys can see. So the enameling process, um, if you haven't watched any of my videos or our previous live stream back in February, the very first step in enameling is to put on the counter enamel, which is just basically references the backside of the piece that you're working with. Um, it's enameling the backside of it, so which isn't necessary for every piece, but if you're working with thin material, it is preferred. So this is what it currently looks like. Um, this is going to be the backside, and so it'll be you know, set up like this. And so what I'm going to apply to make the enamel stick, since this is a domed piece, um, before when I was working with pendants, I didn't have to do this step, but I'm going to use um, what's called clear fire. And it's basically, it's kind of like a glue. Um, it's very viscous. So you use one part clear fire, one part distilled water, um, just to make a solution. And then you can paint it on or spray it on um, onto the piece. So for now, I'm just gonna be painting it on. Real quick, just wanted to say thank you, Bar Run Forge over there, Troy. Uh, keep Roy's mug off screen and supporting Eli, buddy, <laughs> with a $3 super chat. Thank you, Troy. Um, and, yeah, I can hide. I can close out my little window, and then all you guys got to see is pretty old Jessica. That works out pretty good. No. Also, welcome to everyone who is just joining us. Granddad's Forge, hello. Yes, it did start, by the way. Good to have you here. All right, back over to me. All right, I think um, for this first piece, I'm gonna see, sometimes for counter, counter enamel, I just use a mix of colors that have gotten kind of, um, it's just like a mix of colors that were left over. So for this first layer, I'm just gonna use that. Uh, a lot of times I do two layers for counter enamel. So I just have a sheet of paper here that I'm gonna sift over, and that way I can reuse any enamel that's dropped. And I have a little sifter. Um, I think this is called a 60 uh, mesh sifter. I have a list of all the supplies I'm using down below if you're curious about learning more. Um, and I'm just using the medium size one. I also have a large one, but I'm just going to use the medium for now. Is and it, is, it, is it possible to move that page that you're going to be sifting huh? over? Back a little, well, sure. Over to where the copper bowl is at? Yes. Everything that way so it's easier. Yes, thank you for reminding me about that. <laughs> Okay, there, now you guys can see. So I'm getting, normally you wanna get your sifter half to three quarters full. And then just cause I left my piece sitting over here, I'm gonna go ahead and touch it up one more time with the clear fire um, water mix. Just because if any spots dry out on it, the enamel will kind of just um, drop off of them or go down and settle. So it won't necessarily stick all over. So here we are. And then to apply the enamel, I just tap the sifter or you can rub the stem. I just prefer tapping. And you want to get a nice even coat that is that you can't see any bare copper through. Jess, 410 Forge Blacksmith said, is Roy working the controls tonight? That's a switch. You go, Jess. Yes, uh, Roy is working the controls tonight. Um, I think it was February when we did our previous live stream like this. And so it was definitely a crash course for Roy. Um, as he, he likes to joke about himself, I don't do big buttons. <laughs> so um, he's getting to see kind of the back end of, well, he likes to call me octopus lady when I'm running all the controls. Because um, there's definitely a lot to click on. You have to click every time to switch mics, and then you have to click when you're reading the comments and all that. So there's lots of clicking <laughs> involved. That's what, you call me Clicky Fingers McGee. So mm -hmm. tonight you're Clicky Fingers McGee. <laughs> Bar on Forge just said, pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. <laughs> That's right. Pay no attention to this guy. By the way, real quick, how many of you think that this camera angle makes it look like I'm eating this thing? 
<laughs> it's like really in the middle of my face. But hey, I look like one of those really cool gamer streamers, don't I? Yes, Wayne Heinz, I can read. <laughs> Barely, but I can read. <laughs> it's all back to you. Okay. Go ahead. All right. Um, what I'm doing now is, so I got my bowl. I won't focus if I bring it too close, but it's evenly uh, sprinkled the colors on there. You see it kind of looks like a bluish gray right now, but that's going to change to... Um, almost a black, if I'm not mistaken, for this color mix um, by the time it fires. But I took my trivet, right now it's cold because I haven't fired it tonight, and I put um, just a bit of chalk on the individual trivet legs. And that's just, um, you do that every so often, and it helps the enamel not to stick if it happens to get on there. So I'm just going to place my piece on here. And then over by the kiln, um, if Roy wants to switch to camera B, there is a little, oh, I did not turn it on yet. Yeah, it is. Oh, did you turn this on? I didn't. I thought it did. Nope, it's not nope. turned on yet. Um, so I have a uh, electric griddle, I guess they call this. Bought it at a garage sale. It was missing a leg, so I got it cheap. <laughs> um, and then I just set this to around, mm, like around 200 really is all it needs. And basically it just allows the enamel to, um, the clear fire underneath it to dry. I'll bring it over a little closer there. It was fine where it was at. Was it? Okay. Yeah, you could actually see it right there. Can okay. I move it back a little bit? Back towards you? Yep, that's perfect. Right there? Okay. Yep. So yeah, just gonna let that um, sit and dry for a moment if Roy's still at um, camera two. This is my new Paragon kiln. I got it, I don't know, a little over a month ago, I think. Uh, we showed it on an Instagram post not too long ago. And I'm really excited to have it. I've been saving up um, all year long for this. Uh, I've been selling jewelry pieces over on Etsy and on our website. And so I've been setting aside all the sales so I could purchase this kiln. Um, this kiln is called an SC3. And they have another version of this um, called an SC2 that's a bit shorter. And I went ahead to get the extra height in it in case I want to do like copper cups or small copper vases or something like that. Uh, just so I have that extra uh, versatility in it. Why don't you <laughs> open the door? Open the door? Oh, okay. It just will briefly open the door. Doot. <laughs> Sneak peek. You'll see more of that later. It just got up to heat, and even just opening it just now dropped it about 70 degrees. So um, no, important key about working you're gonna, with... You're going to have to crank that ISO down on it. For on it. over here? Uh, you're going to have to crank the uh, exposure down on it. Okay. Front. Front one. While you do that, I'm gonna talk real quick. Sure. Do you want it higher so it's darker? Yeah, make it a little darker. I'd like to say uh, hello, Niels Ogren. Good to have you in the house. Hopefully, I pronounced that right. You got one of the tougher names uh, to <laughs> to uh, pronounce there for a guy like me, anyhow. Oh, uh, let's see here. Who else? Uh, Stefan Merck, hello. Good to have you here. Let's see here. Uh, he also had a question, Stefan Merck. Is it also capable of burning clay? Like for pottery? Question mark. All right. Um, yes, you can do clay and pottery in it. Um, this isn't really an ideal kiln for that. Uh, SC stands for silver clay um, in this series. So it is, this kind of kiln is specifically, they, they kind of call it a jeweler's kiln, um, but it's really specifically good at, um, basically you can do anything under two, up to 2000 degrees. So where I say pottery would be less helpful is just because the internal um, space available to do so is a lot less than what like the regular standard pottery kiln is because they're so deep. Um, also, 
uh, like I said, you can do silver clay or any of the, um, you can do burnout in this. I believe they do, um, sometimes they'll use crucibles and things uh, for like lost wax casting. And in the top of it, there is like a ceramic plug, I think it is. And you can take it out when you're doing burnout of something so that it can vent fully. Have you enameled anything other than copper? Wonder Boy Projects asked. Sure. Um, yes. In one of my previous uh, actual videos I did a couple months ago, I actually did some enameling on steel. Um, these are just steel flower blanks. And I was kind of playing with it to see how it would work out. Um, the first set I did, it worked out good. The enamel stuck. Um, and then I tried another set of steel flower blanks and I think the carbon content was a bit different in it. And I was having some chipping, so I was, I was kind of fighting the chipping a bit. Um, so what I, what I ended up, I did some research and I found there's a coating you can put on steel that is kind of an interme intermediary between the steel expansion rate and then the enamel expansion rate. So it's kind of like in between the two. So it allows you to um, enamel better on steel. Uh, of course, you wanna do low carbon steel and there's um, companies that sell uh, especially specifically what's called enameling steel. It's just an extremely low carbon steel um, that has that closer expansion rate to the enamel. Got another question from Granddad's Forge that just came in. It said, is clear fire sticky? Question mark. And then also followed by a question from Bar Run Forge for the uneducated, aka me. What is the purpose of enameling other than color? Okay. All right. Um, the first question from Granddad's is clear fire sticky. Um, it's not. It's not sticky like uh, like a super glue or anything like that. It's not like that. More or less, it's just. Um, it's kind of like stringy. Uh, like I said, viscous. Like it's very. Like it has just a thicker consistency to it. Um, versus if you use straight water, basically what happens is the water. Um, doesn't want to spread evenly. It just forms little droplets on the surface. And so when you spritz it with enamel or put your enamel on there, um, it just wants to stick to just where those droplets of water have formed. So that's why you use the clear water, clear fire as an additive. Um, it's not necessary on flat pieces, like I said. And there's also a few other um, alternatives you can use. I, I'm not sure. I think I may have seen that someone's tried in the enameling forums, they've tried just like Elmer's glue before but they said that it kind of has a nasty burn off smell. So that's <laughs> less preferable. Um, so yeah, that answers um, that question, I think. But anything that's 3D, you know, three dimensional, you wanna use the clear fire on. Color. Uh, the purpose for enameling besides color. Um, the main purpose is for decoration. I haven't gone super deep into the history of enameling. Uh, I know in some cases it was used to perhaps make a surface um, maybe food safe that maybe otherwise wasn't, or maybe to like say if maybe if enameling was originally done on steel, um, the enameled surface wouldn't rust like steel, the steel would. So maybe a way of protecting it. One of the other questions came in from Newt's Leather and Metal Smithy. By the way, hello, good to have you in the house. It was, is it possible to put too much enamel coating on your project? Question mark on that. And then followed by Gordon's Farmer's Forge was asking, do you use a clear coat to protect the work more? Um, so the first question, can you put too much enamel on? Yes, you can. Uh, what will happen is if you put too much enamel is the enamel can actually run. Um, this will, with shallow pieces, kind of what I'm, what I'm working on, it wouldn't necessarily cause a visible uh, issue. If you were doing something like really steep, like a vase or something, um, the enamel would actually probably run a little bit towards the bottom of the base, base um, and it might actually like pool right at the very rim of it. And I've had that happen on one of my projects before because I just had a lot of layers of enamel. Not that I over applied the enamel, it's just a bunch of layers. And I was firing it at extended heat to try to get a certain effect. And so it did, um, like it does run and kind of pool a little bit, um, but it does it on a small scale. It's not like, like super runny and super gripping. It'll just 
kind of gather in a place. And then what was the other question? Do you use clear coat to, pro to clear protect coat. the work more? Okay. Um, no, clear coat's not, not necessary. Uh, basically enamel is glass and so it's um so I mean, it can ship but as far as just general use um, a protective spray wouldn't really pro provide any extra uh, durability to it next question we've got the speedy mex commented is all enamel food safe question mark and then that is followed up by a question from 410 Forge Blacksmith. I've seen a ton of enamel ladles, spoons, etc. in antique stores. Could you enamel some of Roy's ironwork? It would definitely set you apart on the Etsy shop. So the first question um, about enamels being food safe is the older enamels were leaded. Um, so there is some lead in them and they kind of, they consider those Mm, iffy. They don't really suggest um, using leaded enamels, especially if it's going to be a product that you're eating food on. Um, so the ones I get from Thompson's Enamel, I believe all of theirs now are lead free. Um, now, downside is the colors are a little richer with the leaded enamels. So if you're like buying on eBay or something, um, you're going to, you're most likely going to come across the leaded enamels. So um, unless it specifically says that it's unleaded, but that's kind of the difference there. And then um, as far as uh, enameling some of Roy's work, um, like I said, I believe it could be done. I haven't bought in the, um, uh, the intermediate uh, coating for the steel to try doing that more in depth just yet. Um, but yeah, I definitely believe it could be done for sure because there's a lot of enamelists who work in sculpture and that's exactly what they do they enamel on steel. So I can answer this one for CU Metals said, ask, can you use this inside pre-soldered copper pipe? As I have something that would need something like food safe laid to the inside walls of the pipe. So I can speak to that solder uh, or like soldered pipes, like your regular plumbing solder is at too low of a melting temp. The glass takes a lot higher melting temp than what the pipe does. Solder usually melts right around a thousand degrees, sometimes a little bit less. It can be even, depending on the silver content in it and the other alloying agents like the tin that's in it, it can actually even melt all the way down to like 800 degrees or so. So you would need to get brazing uh, rod to braze your joint closed first and then you could enamel it because the braze rod has to get a lot hotter than what the copper would be elsewise. Otherwise when you try to enamel the piece the solder would melt out of the joint uh, for the temperatures needed to actually melt the glass. Right. When you reach a good um, spot in the comments we'll go ahead and go over to um, the kiln. There. All right. So what I have is, I think this is called a firing fork. Um, basically we just adapted a marshmallow roaster and I'm going to use this to lift my, um, tray, uh, metal, metal mesh tray here and just set the whole piece in. I'm going to try not to drop it. And the faster you can do that, the better. Um, this dropped my kiln significantly. It being a small kiln like it is, it dropped at about not quite 200 degrees, but right now it's sitting at about um, 1300 degrees. So it's got to climb back up. And ideally um, 1450, uh, you can do it down in the, you can enamel in the 1300 degree range. Um, just takes a little slower and sometimes you'll get a little different effects with the enamel with it. So, and um, I special ordered my kiln to have a, uh, this glass window you see here. Um, that's, it only costs like 30 extra bucks because I ordered mine brand new and they had it as an option. Uh, they also have things with kiln, um, some of the other doors have like, uh, like little lift up doors for people who do um, glass bead making and stuff. But the window allows me to look in there without having to open the door 
and see what color my enamel is. So it's, it's gonna basically turn to a orange. And it's just beeping now to tell me that um, it's dropped to a low temperature. And so it'll beep for a little bit until it gets back within uh, its range, which I think is about a 100, 100 degree range um, beeps until it reaches that point. Um, people were asking, one, they said the kiln door looked like it was slightly open, and I think that's because it lost its little catchment method on there. The other thing uh, that somebody was asking, CU Metals, does this stuff have to be kiln dried then? I'm guessing, question mark. Kiln dried. Um, I think what you're referring to is a pottery method. So the, the enamel um, is technically dry before it goes in the kiln. That's why I use the uh, little electric griddle for it to kind of just, um, it evaporates any moisture that's on the surface ahead of it going in. And then just the process itself is called kiln fired enameling and versus torch fired enameling. That's using a, uh, a torch and basically um, I, I've done that prior to getting the kiln. I did torch fired enamels. Um, kind of a limit on that is that anything that's about two inches is about, about the hottest you, or uh, beside, outside of that size, it gets difficult to heat with a torch because the whole piece doesn't want to heat evenly. Like you have to kind of spot heat it and then, you know, the enamel runs the risk of um, not fusing properly. So, um, but yes, that was the topic of our previous live stream back in February was the torch fired enameling. Yeah, so um, yeah, a couple of people said, Gordon Farmers Ford said, Roy, get a bolt in that door for that kiln door. I'm like, yeah, I probably need to, I need to fix that. It came with like these little ball bearings that were supposed to, uh, that were like spring loaded, but they kind of popped out on it for whatever reason. So that's something we'll probably just have to order a new latch from Paragon Kilns for that thing. It's kind of, well, it's not the best latch method uh, on, on the world there. So, um, yeah, that's it. By the way, just like to say, everybody, thank you for being here. Um, thank you for joining us this evening. Jessica's going to go over here and look at the kiln there. Camera two? Yep, we're at camera two. I'll take a you. All right. So I'll hold it about here. Can you see it? Yep. So as it, when I first brought it out, it was about a um, orange to probably, probably an orange or a bright red. Um, and then as it cools, the colors actually, they will change from what they look like when they're um, hot. So I'm just going to let that sit there for a bit. And it's got to, it's got to cool off before I can handle it. So we'll take any more comments or questions. Okay, so Hans, Charming Hollow Forge, came in, said, Hey, Roy and Jess, love you guys. Love you too, Hans. Hopefully you, the wife and kids, are doing wonderful down there. Our isolated friends of the South. <laughs> also, uh, Gordon Farmer's Forge said, Could you use the forge for enameling? Question mark. So we've had this question before, um, and we haven't tried experimenting with it yet. But um, I think what would happen in a gas forge is that because of the airflow of um, you know, the, the burner and of the reaction that's happening in the burner tube, I think that it would probably blow the enamel off before it actually fuses to the surface. But I have seen um, in a Facebook group where somebody had successfully uh, enameled a piece of, it was like a steel hook that they forged and it was like a flower up at the top and they had um, enameled that. And I think the way they did it is I think they, um, they got the steel up to like an orange and then they brought it out and quickly sprinkled the enamel on it. And then that was enough to start the fusing process. And then they put it back in the forge um, just to bring it back up to like that bright red. And I think that's how they did it, so. So I had a question here from uh, Niels. He said, Roy, are you going to make any axes? Um, that's a great question. I do plan on making some axes 
for my Lumberman series that I plan on doing here on YouTube. That'll be like, you know, February, March time frame, hopefully. I can start video production on that and it'll come out next year at some point. Uh, I'm going to be doing a timber frame sauna house build as uh, just a quick little FYI. I mean, I haven't told anybody about this yet, I don't think. No, but uh, yeah, so I'm going to be doing a timber frame sauna house build up here at our place um, and getting my tools prepped because eventually, uh, once the kids get a little bit older and grown and out, out of the house, I plan on building Jessica and I a timber frame cabin to finish out the rest of our days in. So that's kind of my big goal. So I'm going to get started. I've got other things like a smokehouse and a few other type structures that I need some timber framing tools. So I'm going to do a whole series on making a bunch of timber framing tools. But as far as making axes for a living or anything on your level there, sir, probably not <laughs> for that. So hopefully that answers that question in detail. Let's see here. Uh, uh, Speargrass Forge says, Hi, Jess. And, oh, hi, Roy. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Looking down here. Graham Pepper joined us. Hello, Gra Graham Pepper. Good to have you here. He said, Do you usually work multiple pieces when you enamel? Question mark. I do for efficiency. Um, and that really has to do with the fact that um, some of the stages require things like cool down. Um, so like for this bowl, instead of waiting for it to get fully cool to the touch um, to start the next process on it, I can go ahead and start another bowl and um, about, about three to four at a time, uh, especially if I'm just you know out here working by myself. Um, it, it seems to work pretty good to do three to four at a time. All right, let's see here. Uh, Charming Hollow Forge asked, let's see here. He said, Jess, did you ever think of moving, of moving sculptures? Can't think of official name now. And I do believe he means kinetic sculptures. Um, I haven't personally thought of doing a kinetic sculpture. sculpture. I mean, I've seen them and they are really cool. Um, I do have a few sculptural pieces that I would like to do. I have uh, like a note, big notebook of ideas and I, I don't know, I probably have like a hundred different ideas in there. Um, one of the things I would like to do would be like some little copper houses. So you kind of see them sometimes out of wood, uh, but I'd like to do some, some of those. Um, I'm trying to think of, oh, I would also like to do kind of like some floral related sculptures, um, maybe a little less 3D than what blacksmiths do where it's kind of viewable on every side and maybe more a bit um, like two dimensional or like meant for like on the wall. So I've kind of thought about that indiv in, like enameling individual elements and then um, putting them together on some sort of sculpture. Brian Ely said, Roy's making sharp thingies. <laughs> nope, not making sharp thingies. Well, I guess they are sharp, but they're not sharp, flat, and pointy thingies. That's the important part. <laughs> um, let's see here. What else do we have here? Randy at Newt's Leather and Metal Smith. He said, ooh, a thought. Oh, it's Hans. He's talking to Hans. Uh, let's hear Chad Cords. Hello. Good evening. He said, so weird with Jess out front and Roy behind the scenes. LOL. <laughs> and then Alice Harvey said, like a tiara. I don't know what that means. I'm not staying up with the chat very well. Roy sucks at doing this. I really do. Fine. It's back over you. Okay. <laughs> Tell them what I'm doing. All right. Um, getting started on my second bowl. And I put the clear fire on there. And the back of this one, I am doing uh, grass green. So it's an opaque, kind of like a bright green. Um, I did a bowl, if anybody, if any of you have seen our Instagram post, I shared some of the bowls I did recently over there. And one of them that I did was a leaf bowl. It was, uh, Roy was really impressed with how it turned out. Um, and the back of that bowl I did was green as well. So this is a slightly different green. Um, I'm kind of going for the same concept I made on that bowl. 
and just trying it with um, maybe slightly different colors. I am all out of coffee. That is not good at all. I drank the whole thermos before the stream got started. <laughs> we'll have to see how that is. So, Hans at Charming Hall of Words said, I think you guys could definitely nail a sculpture. And let's see here. <laughs> Brian Neely said, a wood slick is flat and sharp. And chisels have 90 degree points. Well played, sir. Well played. <laughs> John Lavender. Yep, a little different live stream. He said, cool beans. Hope all are well. Well, John, I hope you're doing all right. Oh, and Brute Lemon said, that is a crime, Roy. You can't be out of coffee! Exclamation point. <laughs> Also, hey, we just got a $25 super chat from Rob Hupp. It said, charity super chat for Roy, A for effort. <laughs> but don't quit your day job. Need more Jessica streams, though. Everyone give him a round of applause. Roy is doing quite well. I am, I'm proud of him. <laughs> the stream hasn't crashed yet, so. <laughs> um... Island Metal Forge in with a dollar forty nine super sticker. Was it a super sticker? It's a. Thank you, Yamez, for the mustache. Gosh. All right, go over to camera two. It's on your mic. Doot, doot, doot. Okay, there we go. It's just shaking off the scale. As you'll see, copper, um, copper scales up too, obviously, and it does up a, a little bit. Up here. Up a little bit. There here we go. go. Copper scales up too, so I'm gonna have to clean this off. But here is the final coloring of this layer. And I actually got it pretty good and even. So I'll have to think about whether I wanna do one more coat on there or not. But meanwhile, I am getting my second bowl over here. I'm gonna grab my chalk real quick. And chalk it up a bit. Might as well probably leave this over here. Um, this trivet could still be hot, so I'm going to try to avoid touching it with my fingers. And I really need to make about um, probably three, have three of these little trivets be good. But I'm just putting this on the griddle to, to dry off the moisture. And check <laughs> checking it before I do a Roy, burn my fingers. All right, so most of this can just brush off just like this. All right, I don't want to contaminate my enamel though. So I'll scoot back a little. Um, so instead of putting this in the um, Sparex bath, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and do a second coat directly on top of this. So I don't really need to clean the front right now thoroughly. I'm just going to use um, one of my dry green, um, whatever these things are called, little scrub brush, scrub pad. I'm just gonna kind of wipe, wipe the surface down gently. It's just gonna knock the rest of the loose scale off. And that's really all I need is just because I don't want it um, to fall into the enamel when I'm sprinkling the enamel on because then I would get little black specks in there and that's preferable not to do that. So that's just kind of the purpose between cleaning, cleaning the bowls between or any of the projects um, between layers as until both sides are covered anyway so uh kind of answered some of these say so, so are we in speedgrass forge so are we in jessica's enameling room in the barn or have you not made jessica's workshop yet roy no we're actually in the corner of the metal shop for the what i like to call the modern shop where i do all my welding and fabricating she's got her own little jessica's corner that she has carved her nice little niche out there for um, <laughs> And that's what you're seeing there. Actually, just behind her there, um, over her shoulder, is the door that leads out to the uh, forging shop. Yep, right behind her there. And then Newt, Randy at Newt's Leathersmithy said, 
Uh, she needs two more rivets. Roy, you know what you have to do. Oh, well. <laughs> uh, two more trivets. Sorry. Yeah, he, he spelled it rivets, but he meant trivets. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Michael Hunt said, I really enjoy watching you do this work. It is very interesting. <laughs> and then another one. Burnaby Sanchez says, can you enamel teeth? My dentist charges too much. I, <laughs> um, yeah, I have no idea what, uh, what kind of binder you would have to add to enamel a tooth, but yes, <laughs> that would be very interesting. I don't think you would want the 1500 degree torch in your mouth though. That probably wouldn't be too comfortable. I'll enamel them for you. No problem. Just, you gotta sign a waiver before I do. What are you doing now? Now, I am adding my second layer of counter enamel on the first bowl I started. I decided to do a black on it because um, the final color I was wanting probably on this piece is black, I think. So I just kind of used the other layer as a filler layer. Um, that way I could use a bit less black because I'm half, I think I only have two jars that are half full. So I have to slightly conserve on black. Gordon Farmer says, Jess, give it time before Roy crashes the stream, LOL. I will. <laughs> <laughs> so... Stephen Watkins coming in with a $5 super chat said, sorry, I'm late. This darn day job gets in the way. So hi from Minion Smithy. Hello, Stephen Watkins. Good to have you in the house. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Ryan Jones or Boar. Welcome. And everyone who has shown up, Burnaby Sanchez. I didn't say hello and welcome to you as well. So good to have everybody in the house this evening. And, uh, Thank you to all of the channel members for all your great support and showing up. Those those are those funny looking people with the little anvil badges right next to their names. <laughs> thank thank you, you funny looking little little people. <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying. I'm sad. I'm sad. I'm out of coffee. <laughs> Blame it on the coffee. <laughs> it's the coffee's fault. So, let's see, probably to do this part, I'll take the gloves off. Otherwise, I might be clumsy. So, on that piece there, um, I just, since the bottom side's not coated yet, I can get away with putting it on one of my little short trivets because um, that way I can still use my other trivet because I have to improvise. But this piece is dry now, so we're going to go ahead and put it into the kiln. So I am going to very carefully go in. There we go. Maybe that was fast enough. We shall see. So it takes, it takes maybe four minutes. Um, and yes, before somebody asks, I have dropped the my bowls before. Um, like the enamel was still powder form and I like stumbled and bloop it fell off so gotta be very careful and work on your balance <laughs> also like to take and uh, acknowledge real quick Gordon Farmer uh, that's fine buddy don't worry about the membership you got to take care of a number one first so um, that goes to anybody who becomes a channel member on the channel it's 100% optional. You still get your name up on the wall. Um, you're a constant supporter of ours. So if it's between uh, feeding my fat face or taking care of your own, take care of your own first. So <laughs> it's greatly appreciated nonetheless. We also have Jean Simonelli dropping in with a big hi, Jessica. And I also missed a chat real quick. Hold on. I don't know how to scroll back up. Uh, I, 
I don't know, and I'm not going to try. So if you have a question, I, Roy's not trying to re-scroll, so you need to re-ask the questions, please. <laughs> Otherwise, I will. I will destroy this stream. It, it'll happen. All right. Yeah, I got to watch letting the Roy loose. <laughs> Far run from Ward said, he called me fat. <laughs> Because <laughs> you said the weird looking little people. <laughs> Wonder Boy Projects asked, on average, how many colors do you put on them? Question mark. Um, probably, depending on the design, I'm going anywhere from two to five, five kind of a maximum. Um, I mean, you could go for more. It just... Uh, depends the effect you're going for so like if you want kind of like a rainbow effect you could put on a base color or a white and then you could just use the sifter i mean i even have a tiny sifter here it's like a little thimble basically or you can even get what's called a line sifter and it basically just um it's just a little bit bigger than like the head of a pen and you can just put dots on you know but i mean yeah it's it's basically limitless it could be as many colors as you want um, right now I have, I think, about 20 colors, and I would like to get all of the colors. Sorry, I have to cut you off, Jess. Neil, Graham, thank you for the $5 super chat. Brian Halman, thank you for the $2 super chat. A little coffee money from Halman Forge. Thank you all very much. And Gene Salinelli said, I can scroll for you, Roy. Question was, do you ever get the itch? Uh, it came in from Alice Harvey, I believe. Do you ever get the itch to enamel silver? That's a good question. Let me grab this out real quick and I'll answer it. That way I don't overfire. Make sure Roy's at camera too. We're there, finally. Okay, all right. <laughs> finally. There we are. Very cool. It kind of has a really cool speckly effect. We'll see how that looks when it's cooled off all the way. Oh, that's right. That is the green. So it'll get a second coat. So do I want to enamel on silver? Well, first, I haven't ever worked with silver. Um, but secondly, uh, they sell what's called um, silver foil. And frequently, people who enamel will use it uh, in their designs because it brings more, it's brighter. Um, brings It allows, especially if you're working with transparent or see-through enamels, um, you can see them a lot better on silver foil or just silver in general but yeah I've been thinking about getting some silver foil and playing with it I think um, it's called silver leaf I think is basically what it is and it's like I think $36 for um, like a six by six sheet or something like that welcome Gene Simonelli to the bellows boy tier thank you sir for becoming a channel member greatly appreciate you you're also very welcome, Alice Harvey. And let's see here. Uh, da, 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 da. I think that's good. And thank you, everyone, for all the hand claps. I greatly appreciate that. That is awesome. Good to have everyone. Oh, also, CU Metals asks, where do you get the colors and what are they called? Um, so... I get, I mean, you can buy enamels all, all sorts of different places. Um, the ones I have mostly are from Thompson Enamels. Those will be the ones in the white. Um, and those are just, they're based out of Kentucky. Um, and they have very high quality enamels. And I think a jar like this on average will run around $10, um, but it kind of varies per color. Some colors, um, the additives that were used to make a certain color are more expensive, so that's why sometimes the price will range on them. The place I get them is um, Pearly Carpel on Etsy. Uh, her enamels are cheaper. <clears throat> I've, I, they seem to react a little differently. Um, the grains themselves seem a little bit bigger, the ones coming from Carly, Pearly Carpel. Uh, she's based out of Israel. She'll ship anywhere. Um, I think it's free shipping over $35 on her orders. And a jar like this, I think, was like five dollars. So it's about it's about half price um, to go with enamels from her. But um, some of the, I think, the expansion rate with hers is a little different as well. So um, just kind of 
if you're going for the highest quality, that would be Thompson's. But if you're just like trying to play around with some uh, to get started, like Pearly's are perfectly, perfectly good. And I'm using her color actually. Uh, the grass green, that's what I'm using on the back of the bowl currently, that um, the second bowl I just started. Had a couple questions bypass, so they'll have to ask them again. Um, let's see here. Uh, what was it? Da, 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 da. Looking, looking, looking. I just missed it. Uh, Wonder Boy Project says, do you plan on selling the enamel? Question mark. And also Chris Johnson. Hello. How about enameling some forged poppies to auction off to support your local veterans? Question mark. So let's see, do I plan on selling enamels? Um, I don't plan on being an enamel distributor just because um, I'm not really necessarily interested in buying it in bulk and then like repackaging it. Um, so, yeah, I mean, they're, they're reasonable enough to, to buy those. And there's, like I said, there's so many colors. There's like 150, 150 different colors just from Thompson. Um, and that's like the medium expansion um, enamels for, for copper, silver, and gold. And so, uh, again, I don't, I don't think I'd be, I'll be sell or will be selling them through our website right now. I'm just trying to build up my, <laughs> my own supply a little bit at a time. And the second question about the poppies, um, I, I have wanted to try forging and enameling poppies. So that very well, maybe something, uh, we'll do at some point. And especially with the plasma cutter, um, we'll be able to do some, I'll be able to design some of my own designs. So yeah, that might be something that'll happen. So uh, we just had Randy at Newt's Leather Smithy become welcome to the Bellows Boy tier. Thank you for becoming a member. Good, sir. We greatly appreciate it. Make sure everybody gives him a hand clap. Also, CU Metal says, uh, let's see here, thanks, Jess and Roy. You're doing a, stir a sterling job, sir. Don't much on the mic thinking it's coffee. Ha <laughs> uh, ha. Also, Gordon Farmer's Forge asked, is there an um, italic Lake enamel question mark and bar run forge asks is there a way to mask a piece so the enamel only adheres to specific areas okay um let's see the first one was uh metallic enamel there um is they don't call they they call it something different um and there's also an additive you can take like mica flakes and um, you can use those Basically, you sprinkle them on and um, you fire the piece a little longer and some of the mica will sink in. Some of it will wash off afterwards, so that's why you fire it a little longer and you put it on a little heavy. But yeah, mica flakes, they come in all different colors, like gold, silver, bronze, um, and rainbow of colors as well. Uh, oh, I did remember, um, they, they have, um, I think they call it opalescent um, enamel, and it is it does have a very metallic look to it. And then the other question about masking. Yes, you can mask. Um, you'd basically, you could use like a painter's masking tape. I've seen this in an enameling book and you could uh, mask part of it off and then, you know, apply your enamel and then gently remove the, the masking tape portion of it. Or, you know, there's another method of where you just apply your enamel and it's called Scraffito and you use a, um, you could use a paintbrush or a pen or just like a sh sharpened wooden stick and then you can remove the enamel while it's still, um, while the clear fire is still wet and you can doodle a design basically into it uh, and it leaves, leaves that effect. Let's see here. Uh, Chad Cord said, sorry guys, got to head out. Enjoyed what I was able to watch. Just keep up the awesome work. Brett Larson said, hi friends. Hello, Brett Larson. Everyone's giving clappy hands for the new membership. Sorry, Randy. Jessica was on a Jessica jaunt there. I wasn't able to <laughs> comment where to find that join button, uh, but thank you for doing that. And also, while Gene Simonelli's in the chat, I'd like to invite you down. The next time I'm down uh, in Ohio, I'll be actually at the Goshen Blacksmithing Club taking and forging some skillets doing a class on skillets you should come down and see me sir if you're in the area happen to be anyhow that's just uh north east i believe of cincinnati they're in goshen ohio
also Chris Johnson said have you done a how-to video on the torch method question mark I have um, there's actually I put a whole bunch of resources in the description of this video so you will find all of my enameling videos down in the description I think there's at least eight um, and I think at least three of those were torch fired enamels uh, the first one I ever did for the channel at our house um, and I, I called labeled it trying um, torch fired enameling so that's definitely down in that list below and then also some other projects I've done like enamel, enameling copper handles um, and enameling some copper cups those are all down there as well as um, links to some of the um, supplies I'm using Brett Larson oh at Christ in Hours. Speaking of skillets, I got the skillet blank you sent. Thanks again. Brett, you're more than welcome. Thank you for getting picking that up there uh, or getting it. Uh, yeah, I've got a bunch of those skillet blanks um, still sitting on the website. We'll see if we'll see if they end up selling or not. Uh, but at anyways, we're going to be making up quite a few of them at the Goshen Blacksmith uh, club there down in southern Ohio so that's going to be a good thing and uh, looking forward to teaching that class um, it ought to be pretty fun we'll see how many people come across the skillet blanks also speaking of skillets I will have some videos coming out on that very soon uh, I've been a little bit on like overwhelmed with the amount of work that I've got going on currently here in the shop I actually just quoted sold and quoted and sold a three foot diameter copper bird bath um, water feature that I need to forge and I have to have it done before I head down towards the tail end of November so uh, I've, I've got to work on that Heath Miller with a five dollar super chat by the way a few dollars for the enamel stock for Jess keep up the great work thumbs up thank you Heath for that all right so this is my third bowl. I just went ahead and did the back of it. I am using a lead-free uh, opaque um, enamel. This one's called Coffee, and that one's from Pearly um, Carpel. It's kind of like a medium brown. Perfect for Roy, right? <laughs> the coffee-colored enamel. And so I'm gonna go set this over on the drying rack now. And my um, next bowl is ready to go in the kiln. I will go ahead and move over to camera two, Roy. And I'm using Kevlar gloves to protect my hands. So this green one now should be cool. Double check in there. So it's got the scale on there. Um, and then you can see it's kind of patchy. There's kind of areas here where it didn't, we're this way. It's a little patchy, so I'm going to go ahead and do a secondary coat. And then I think the counter enamel on this one will be done and we'll be ready to move to the front on it. Yeah, so um, let's hear. Steve Watkins uh, said, ooh, ooh, I got the one I won. Can't wait for your video. Yeah, I'm going to be coming out with those videos. Um, they might be delayed next week somewhat just because, again, I've been slammed with a couple orders here. Um, the big bird bath bowl thing, That's a there's a three-foot diameter bowl, bowl, and it's kind of a shallow bowl. I mean, it's five inches deep and three feet across and then I've got an 18 inch diameter copper bowl that goes on top of that and there's some rings and then there's about a hundred and fifty pound um, there's a hundred and fifty pound quartz crystal ball that goes on top of that and the customer is going to buy the crystal ball since it was going to be extraordinarily expensive to ship one of those clear out to California it's already expensive enough to ship a three foot diameter bowl uh, for that so anyways lots of craziness in the shop going on uh, I need about five guys <laughs> for a month <laughs> here to get caught up on all my iron work um, but uh, yeah 
So, so that's what's going on here. So I will have videos on not only the spatula, but ladle and the, the different style handles and skillets as well. Uh, I'll put out some of those videos to help you all out. Also, there was a question, I don't see it now, I think I, I, it bypassed, was talking about not being able to fit it in your forge. I do plan on showing a method that you can do it without being able to fit it in your forge. And most people have it already, and it's using a weed burner, so um, you can get it hot. So, But anyways, uh, enough about that. Uh, Boar said three foot for an ostrich. <laughs> it's a bird bath for an ostrich. So. Hopefully I didn't miss anybody. If somebody did a super chat, I see some clappy hands up there. Brute Lemon said, I'm back, everyone. What did I miss? Steve Watkins said, yikes. <laughs> Brett Larson. Brett Larson said, man, if I lived closer, I'd volunteer as tribute to come help. <laughs> come and help. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Randy Newt Leathersmith. Randy Newt Leathersmithing said, um, "No, I'm not coming back to Michigan. It's not happening." <laughs> oh well. Are you going to the Anvil or, or to the? Thank you. Okay, you're just putting it there to dry. All right. Yep, I need one of them free apprentices. <laughs> That's okay with living out in the barn. And Arctic temperatures with Milk Dud. Milk Dud doesn't mind an occasional cuddle. <laughs> All right, we are ready to come out. All right, this one's done. There we go. This is the black coat over the mixed color coat. <laughs> so it's cooling off there. Looks like I'll be able to see some speckles through it, which will kind of give it a cool texture. And so I'm just gonna set that aside to cool. And my other two, I can tell by just by looking at them, um, they kind of have a darker undertone if they're not quite done. My brown one looks done here, so I'm gonna go ahead and put that one in. Eh, if my kiln's back up to heat. We're gonna, actually we're gonna give it about, give it a few more seconds, maybe a minute let it fully come back up to temperature that way i'm not less a little less likely to set off that pesky alarm one thing you have to keep in mind too when you're doing enamel is you want to keep the scale away from your work especially when it's hot um, so like if you're taking it off the trivet and setting it down on steel which you can do while it's cooling but you don't want to set it while it's hot into a big old pile of scale because it'll stick right in your enamel Brett Larson asked, so I'm a bit late to the stream today, so I may have just missed it, but how long are these going into the kiln for each time? Question mark. These are going in the kiln for about four minutes. Uh, I'd say that's probably, probably about the right amount of time, which um, what happens to the enamel? Like you guys can't see through the window. We can't see you. Uh, they can't. Oh, I'm over here now. Hello. <laughs> um, so the enamel uh, goes through a couple different stages as it's heating up. Um, the first one is called, I think, like a sugar coat. And so it basically it kind of looks like granulated sugar on the surface. And then the stage after that, as it starts melting a little bit, is called orange peel. So it kind of has like those little bumps and it's a little bit rough like the, the in oranges. And then after that stage is when it just reaches um, fully fused to the metal. And then what happens if you keep firing it for an extended amount of time, say like 10 minutes or longer, um, it will, uh, it's called over firing when you do that. The enamel does pull away from the edges a bit and you'll kind of get um, like some black, like a little bit of black edging just where the bowls, like the bowl meets the edge. And you also sometimes get that if you put the enamel on too thin. Um, just what's happened is the copper, especially copper, because it's reactive a bit with the colors sometimes, is if the copper's, um, the enamel's too thin, it'll change the color of the copper. Did I say that right? It'll change the color of the enamel in that spot where the enamel's been applied thinner. 
Let's see here. CU Metal says, pay for the flight and passport, Roy. I'm yours for however long you need me, sir. Get trained by the best I know and see. <laughs> I don't know. Having to be around me 24-7, that can take its toll on people. Just look at Jessica. She's got nothing to say all the time. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's it's actually quite interesting. Um, I'll talk for a second if you don't mind, Jess. Do you need me to go over to the thing? Um, Are you good? Okay, I give it another minute there. So, um, yeah, it it's actually it's interesting. A lot of the work that I do when I got started and I started running my business, that was a perfect time actually, probably for me to actually have help in the shop. 24 7 because I was doing a lot of production like items and so my business was really structured around that now the type of work that I get hired for and contracted for is usually stuff that requires my my skill level my experience I guess you would say it it requires my particular experience because it's a very personal piece of artwork that I'm making and you know that's kind of the main difference there um, but on occasionally I get something like this big copper bird bath and it's gonna require a lot of thumping from you know a big mallet and it's big and it's wieldy and that sort of stuff it's like man I wish I had somebody in the shop to help out for sure all right gonna go back to your mic back to me are we still at camera two all right, yep, I'm going to go we're ahead. We are I think we're ready. Before. I think we're ready now. I'm going to pull this out and take a look. Whoa, that is super metallic. That's interesting. This is, can you see that in the camera? It looks like silver right now. Mm -hmm. This is the first time, well, no, I've used this color once before in the kiln, but it did not get that effect. This is the coffee brown. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and set it down and let it cool. That's really weird, sorry. That <laughs> just threw me through a loop, but looking like that. The, the coffee brown, um, the, so there's actually some colors that you can get a effect called Reiku. Those who have heard of pottery have heard of Reiku before. Um, and basically it is, if I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, it's like manganese and, um, like one or two, like silver nitrate is one of them. And so there's a few different additives that um, if those are in the enamels, if you put it in a um, oxygen reducing environment, that it will actually turn to a metallic color or metallic sheen from those enamels. Like it just creates a very specific reaction. And so um, I've tried the Reiku process once um, with success. Basically I took what I did I did it with a jewelry piece. <clears throat> I have a cookie tin here. And while the piece was hot, I set it into like some combustible materials. And um, because with a jewelry piece, it cooled off so quickly and the kiln or the little trivet it was on didn't actually get that hot. Um, it didn't light as soon as I put it in there. So I had to use a torch just to get a little bit of the combustible material started and then put the lid on it. And what that did is like it smokes a little bit and it's basically using up all available oxygen in the container. And then um, you let it cool for a couple of minutes in that environment. And then it brings that like sheen or that opalescence to the, to the surface. So it's a really neat effect, um, but it only works with a few enamels. All right, awesome, awesome. Black Collared Ironworks, I hopefully he meant to do this, but he upgraded membership to Big Burly Striker, and I was going to say thank you. But then he upgraded his membership to Epic Blacksmith of Fire. Oh. Woot woot! <laughs> thank you, Black Collar Ironworks, sir. It is greatly appreciated. Greatly, greatly appreciated. And then Michael Hunt, thank you, brother, for that $20 super sticker that says you are amazing big and it's a pair that's dancing and then what what it's getting crazy it's getting crazy black collar ironworks upgraded membership 
to the golden master smith the thing we thought no one would ever ever upgrade to <laughs> much appreciated brother hopefully all those were meant to happen i get nervous when all those upgrade things happen like that over time it's like ah, hopefully it's okay hopefully that worked out all right so tier under golden master smith though <laughs> so i forget what the other tier is what we what we called it but we have a golden master smith the tier under gold master smith was the epic blacksmith of fire okay, so oh, okay. yep that's that's what i say upgraded to the golden master smith everybody just spam the chat right now with hand claps that is awesome <laughs> that brett larson said lol if you put it out there someone will do it it's like a big red button lol <laughs> well i hope there's all sorts of people hit the big red button then <laughs> oh that that is awesome thank you thank you all so much that is awesome so thank you guys for the support you know we'll put it to good use and uh it is really really greatly appreciated can't say that enough plus i hope there's i hope we've made the perks good enough there um make sure to use the free downloads like you get everything for free on the demo you gotta give me a second oh <laughs> sorry i jumped ahead Roy, roy's not that fast um i was gonna say yeah as golden master smith make sure you take advantage of the free downloads all of the downloads are free including the ebooks so get those like um Especially the blacksmith cheat sheet, you definitely want that one because that's 50 different hand forged projects that um, you can make and sell if you have like a, um, from a beginner to intermediate level uh, forging expertise. And then the other one um, is the great, or no, what do we call that one? The Christmas, hand forged Christmas gifts. That one's a really good one for this time of year. Yeah, so hopefully that, hopefully that works out real well for people. Um, that way I know it's uh, I don't feel like it's enough like but I try to give back as much as I can and give as much to the community as we can um, and hopefully that is enough and apparently it must be for you all to support us on that level so so thank you all so much for that and it's really great by the way seeing everybody taking advantage of their custom emojis and uh, hitting those up so that's awesome Michael Hunt said, I enjoy supporting others who are out there sharing the wealth of knowledge and helping to educate others and sharing their joy with all of us. Well, Michael Hunt, that is my pleasure, sir. I love, I love doing that, and uh, I hope to continue to do that for many, many, many a years into the future. So thank you all very, very, very much. So, uh, Newt's Leather and Metal Smithy, what are the perks for my level? And I do believe you are the Bellows Boy tier. I believe there's, I'll let Jessica answer that. Pass in the buck. <laughs> <laughs> it's all yes, you. all it's right. All um, let's see, for the Bellows Boy, there is, I believe it's 10% off any digital download and 10% off um, any blanks, like any of the blanks that Roy's cutting on the plasma cutter. I might be be mistaken it might be 15 percent. i'm not sure 10 to 15. if you if you press if you're if you go if you're curious um what your perks are and you haven't been able to figure out where they are um what you do is you go like you're going to our channel christ and i works channel and there will be a tab up at the top that says membership like next to like home videos um community and then like next to community it says membership and if you click that, um, it'll have, you know, not only our members only post, um, and it'll also have your coupon code. If you scroll back towards uh, the beginning of the month, we posted all of the monthly coupon codes there. So. Old Wolf, good to have you in the house. Said happy Halloween. And let's see here. How can you know I was here? three exclamation points i'm lurking <laughs> you're not lurking very well there black collar ironworks <laughs> not lurking very well <laughs> when you drop some awesome membership things like that 
Thank you for being a golden master smith. <laughs> Okay, all right, just making sure. All right, now what I'm doing, um, this is the very first bowl I worked on. It has the um, black, black on the back, and I am putting a white coat as the base layer on my front, using up the last of my, this was the very first white uh, jar of white I bought. So I'm just gonna go ahead and finish it up here. I've got a few little specks, because it's been, as I was learning, I didn't keep it as clean as it could have been kept little bits of scale in there but it'll work for the design I have coming up anyway. I'm trying to get the edges real good. Last time I enameled I kind of did not get it quite thick enough on the edges and so I was pulled away from the edges a little bit but so there we are. All right I've got this covered in white and now I'm gonna go over to camera two. I'm gonna put it on the drying rack. And I'm gonna make sure, I'm gonna rub a little chalk on my trivet. This is where it'll be more important for it not to stick because the edges have the chance of making more contact with it, the bowl facing downwards than it did previously. I'll do it something like that. And then um, while you're at camera two, Roy, I'm gonna go ahead and put in my next bowl. Mm -hmm. the green one is ready to go in. Again, this is the second coat of counter enamel on this piece. <laughs> Trying to get speedier. And I'm gonna hold this up again. I'm gonna see if you can see it a little better now. Um, it should be mostly cooled off by now. But can you see that from there? Like right around there? Mm -hmm. It's um, very metallic. Yes, there. very metallic. I was not expecting that effect, um, but I'm, I think, if you can see, it's kind of orange peely, so I don't think I got the coat on there thick enough. So I'm gonna go ahead and do another layer of the coffee brown on this one. And I'm not sure, I'm not sure if it'll just change to brown after that, or if the same effect will come back on the next layer, because maybe it's just a certain reaction, but. Got a question. Mm -hmm. Question was from CU Metals. When do you, when you do the inside, how do you know it's not going to run to the outside? Um, yeah, interesting question. So really, um, it doesn't drip over the edge. If it was going to try to do anything, it would go towards the center of the bowl because it would want to run downwards, just like gravity, you know. Um, the only way that I would get color on the back side of the bowl is when I'm like sifting with the enamel. Uh, if I had painted on the clear fire heavy and if it had the clear fire had wrapped around the edge of the bowl um, and then when I was sifting it, it is possible that I might get a little bit um, just on the back side around the edge. But to avoid that, you can just like gently wipe off the underside of the edges with your fingers and that just wipes any enamel that might be there clean. Also, let's see here, Brett Larson asked, at Jess, so what are these, so let me ask it, so what are these being made into, question mark? They are looking really cool so far, but I probably missed what the end goal is because I was late. Yeah, so these are um, just decorative little bowls. Um, I make, I've made, I don't know, like close to 10 um, for our Etsy store. And yeah, just for decoration, really. They don't have a functional purpose, um, but very easily it could be applied to something that's more functional. Like um, I did uh, handles, like I forged handles um, and I enameled them in class that I took last year. And so I do have a link to that down in the description if you're interested in watching um, how I enameled those. And uh, again, uh, copper cups, those could be done um, all kinds, all kinds of things. Like even, enameling doesn't even have to be done to the entire project. Like say, if you're making like a flower hook, um, either out of steel or copper, you know, you could enamel just the, the head of the flower and then leave the rest, you know, either copper or steel. And that could give it an interesting contrast. Let's see here. 
da, 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 da. I missed one. I think I see. Um, Alice Harvey said, I kind of like that orange peel effect there. Then we also had Sieve Metals asked, does it always bubble like that? Question mark. Um, yeah, the orange peel effect is, it's a very interesting texture. You can aim for that specifically just by, um, you pull the enamel or the piece out before it's completely done. Although it will have to be your last coat because if you were going to apply a subsequent coat, um, it would probably just melt in and fill in while the, because the layer that's already there heats up faster than what the newly applied layer does. It takes it just a little longer. So um, there's an effect called um, like the sugar. I mentioned that the first stage it goes through when it's fusing. Um, and you can actually use that as a uh, end result that you're aiming for. I've seen it in a book where they, they did a sugar coat piece. So it, it looked like there's literally sugar, sugar on the piece because it was just granulated. Um, but you have to have uh, you have to have all the grains of enamel sifted to exactly the same size. Right now, the sifter is um, the sifter is letting through multiple sizes of grains. So, but you can get sifters in different finenesses. Okay, I'll go over to the camera too, and I'd also like to say hello to Metal Blueberries that just joined with us. Thank you for being here, Ty or ty however you'd like it to be i would also like to say hello thank you for being here tech ron maddock he came in earlier thank you for being here neil graham hello good to have you here by the way and ben tombs of course good to see you sir how's it hanging <laughs> okay so yeah, I'm just holding it here so you guys can see the color change a little bit as it's um, cooling off. It started off that brownish color almost. And just looking at my piece here, I got the edges pretty evenly. Um, this one's, the color's real even. Here it's pretty even. Here, I don't know if you guys can see it. There's a little bit of a dark spot there. Um, that's just where the enamel was uh, not applied quite as thickly, but I'm not going to worry about touching that up. I'm going to go ahead and let this piece cool off and then I'll go to working on the front side of it. Graham Pepper said, so what stops the previous layers from moving on you, question mark? Um, so once, hmm? let's go put the next piece in. Give me a second. That way this trivet can, okay. Go get this one in. So what, what prevents the um, enameling or the enamels from moving around? Um, so they can, they can and will move um, if you're applying it without the clear fire, if you're just like sprinkling it straight on um, to like a flat piece of metal. And if you were to like tilt it a little bit, like it kind of would run or shift in the direction um, that you've tilted it. Uh, and also, um, and then like I said before, you know, if you're doing scraffito, you can use a paintbrush or you can use a tool to move the grains of enamel while they're still, before they're fused. But once they are fused um, either to the metal or to the previous layer of enamel, um, it's, not, it's not really gonna go anywhere. They, they pretty well just lock in place, except like I said, if you have too heavy a layer of enamel, like it can kind of drop, drop inwards or drop towards wherever the point, like point of gravity is, kind of like a little bit of like a run maybe in paint. Um, but besides that, no, it doesn't really move too much. So let's see here. Brute Lemon said, any certain place you'd like to get your enameling stuff from? I apologize if this has already been asked. Carnage Creations, Paul Fontanini. Hi. Hello. Good to have you in the house this evening. And Alice Harvey asked, Jess, do you solder? So if you wanted to, you could solder on legs or a handle? Question mark. Legs or a handle. Um, let's see. To answer the First question, I buy enameling supplies several different places. I mean, they're pretty widely available. It's not like there's only one um, distributor. Uh, Thompson Enamels, and um, there's a whole bunch of distributors for Thompson Enamels. One of them is Enamel Warehouse. I've purchased um, from her before. And also uh, Parley Carpel, Parley Carpel uh, on Etsy. 
I buy things there as well. Um, as far as like my blanks, I'll buy those all over the place. I'll buy them on Etsy um, and blanks for my jewelry. Um, I buy some of those from Pearly. I buy uh, another seller in, on Facebook um, that makes, makes and punches out like different copper shapes. I'll buy them there. Um, so yeah, a little bit of everywhere. And remind me of the second question. It'll take me a second. <laughs> the second question is just use solder. solder. So if you wanted to, you could solder on legs or add a handle press next. Hmm. Um, I do, I've tried soldering. Uh, I made three crosses that were forged and I soldered them. Uh, and that's the extent of my experience so far. But um, I definitely plan on, you know, practicing it some more in the future. And I think it could be a very helpful technique to have under your belt. Black Collar Ironworks said, so my gold membership sold me out. <laughs> yes, it sold you out. Hopefully it didn't bankrupt you at the same time. So <laughs> hopefully that were, hopefully you meant for the gold membership. <laughs> All that. Oh, thank you for that. Let's see here. I don't see anybody else there. I did see Kid KV said, I'm always late with three ghostly figures. So, well, good to have you, kid. I'm not sure if it's meant if I'm pronouncing it right, but I'm just going to call you kid because that's the easiest part to read. <laughs> and Techron Maddox said, Roy looks like a radio presenter with that big mic. Yeah. It's like right up in your face. Get ready. Camera two. Got it. Okay. <laughs> Ones. Yeah, the color, the white reacted a little bit and it's maybe a little thin on one spot, but we'll let it cool and see. Deciding how I want. That one's going to have like a little anvil in the center and some other colors. So I'm deciding if I'm going to add any more white to that one. Now, it may not be overly apparent because sometimes the cameras you know working with ISO and some of the other stuff it doesn't render colors just as good on a live stream but the green one on the back side is very vibrant green right now like just super bright leaf green which is really really cool so um, and then the white is definitely a super white color which I think is pretty awesome if you do there uh, it is six. 48 p.m. and if anybody in the chat could drop how many people we have in the chat with us this evening and how many likes we got I would greatly appreciate that because Roy doesn't do big buttons if I tap on something wrong we will all of a sudden go black and Roy won't know how to bring us back <laughs> it is it's a rhyme indeed so, tell us what you're doing there Jess all right so I am applying clear coat to this layer, the one that was metallic brown. And I decided to use my bigger sifter with the pearly carpel um, enamels because the grains are a little thicker. Just allows me to spread it faster. It was going a little slower with the medium size sifter. And since this one was kind of orange peely, I'm going to try to get a little thicker of a coat on it. All right, so let's see here. It looks like we have 72 watching, 54 likes. Also had a couple of other great questions here. See metals, do the surfaces have to be flat for cleaning or could you use items you couldn't clean properly due to indentations and some other stuff enameling? Uh, I didn't get to read the rest of it because it floated right on by with everybody commenting, so. <laughs> um. Okay. So to answer your question, um, no, it does not have to be a perfectly clean surface. You, if it has some sort of grooves or something in it, um, that's okay. It'll like still work out. I've seen the, the lady I learned from, she actually took um, thin copper sheet and she was, um, she actually created like these deep grooves and then she was enameling it. Uh, so that was a really cool effect, but it was like super wrinkled. It was like almost like a, um, 
a muffin tin or something like you know those little muffin cups um, or cupcake cupcake liners how they have all the zigzags in it kind of looked like that but amplified like even greater like like ridges in it and so she enameled it and I think the key to doing that is if you can't if it's got areas where you can't get in and clean it um, just to definitely use um, the Sparex or um, a vinegar bath or whatever type of you know whatever type of um, pickling bath you can do to it as a cleaner to definitely do that so <laughs> sorry just had to go do a check real quick it sounded like some car doors were shutting but no one was there <laughs> Gene Simonelli said 73. Roy doesn't do big buttons. And hammers with flame. <laughs> That's awesome. Where are you going to next, Jess? Now, um, to let's see. Yeah, I'll go back over here. This green bowl is, I'm going to go ahead and clean this by putting it in the Sparex bath because um, I would like to be able to use clear enamel on this uh, without there being any scale at all in the background. So I'm going to drop it in there um, for like 10 minutes and hopefully that'll have it fully cleaned off in that amount of time. And um, I'm going to do the leaf, like the leaf style that we showed over on Instagram using some actual leaves as um, like stencils. Black Collar Ironworks said, oh no, there goes my super chat money. It's a big smiley face. And remember, all smash that like button. Yeah, don't forget to smash the like button. And uh, I definitely appreciate that. <laughs> Brute Lemon said that coffee is making Roy paranoid, eh? <laughs> They're coming to get me. They're coming to get me. I have some chai tea, you know, I don't mind sharing. <laughs> give it, you could give it a sip. It's not too bad. All right, I'll give it a try. You, it's, I'll although, try. I have to warn you, it's lukewarm now. <laughs> My thermos isn't as good as yours. Watch his face, ladies and gents. <laughs> no? <laughs> yeah, he doesn't like tea. He'll drink it if he's oh, sick, uh, but. Uh-uh. <laughs> no, not your thing. That was nasty. Not only was it cold, but now my mouth tastes like Hobby Lobby. Ha! Huh. Or like the men's bathroom mints. No, no, that's no. <laughs> it's all on you. All right, I was trying to decide what I want to do next. I'm gonna, you know, the ones in the bath getting cleaned. Oh, this one's stuck. That's a problem. So even with the chalk, this one's stuck. I gotta try to get it loose. There we go. Yeah, what you'll see here on the back. Right. Camera two. I am. You gotta tell me where to go. Please. Okay. Um, so the trivet left little marks here. Uh, this I need to for the my standard size bowls I need to kind of design the right trivet um, where it makes contact not here actually on the outside of the bowl but it just makes contact on the edge only where there's not enamel. I will be able to clean this up um, after the bowl is complete with a what they call an alumnum stone. Uh, basically it's for grinding glass and I'll be able to work those those ridges out but there'll still be a faint little bit of a faint mark there but that's okay. We got a $5 super chat for, from Clam Smasher. I've just joined and you guys are talking about bathrooms? What else did I miss? Clam Smasher. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> okay, <laughs> he just like set that, that up nowhere. <laughs> Clam Smasher, hello. Greetings. Yes, we've been talking about all kinds of things, but mostly enameling related. So 
Just so you know. <laughs> Roy Everett said, said bathroom, bathroom mints are a very acquired taste. <laughs> and uh, Donald Sarika said, I think I, I don't, I don't know how to pronounce names, said, oh, sorry, Roy, but the face was funny. <laughs> Back over to camera two for a minute. Mm, no, actually, think about I'm gonna give that one just a little bit longer to dry. Back to camera one. Here, I'll, I'll talk for a bit if that's alright. Yeah, or do you, you got more to share? You, okay. <laughs> Said, hush it, Roy. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to tell you guys what I'm going to be doing on the front of this bowl, and I will let Roy read some comments. Um, so I'm briefly, right now, the only part of copper that's um, making scale will be the edges of this, because there's no enamel on the edges. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a little uh, anvil that I cut out of cardstock, and I'm going to sprinkle around the anvil to, it's going to leave the impression of the anvil um, in the center of this bowl. So I'm going to do that in black. And let's see where I put my little anvil thing. I glued it on a pencil. So let's see here. I wedged it, I gotta start again. Start again. All right, go ahead, Roy. You can read a few comments if you want. <laughs> oh man, do I wanna read some comments? <laughs> I tell you what. <laughs> yes, there's plenty of bathroom mint jokes. I'll uh, see you metals had a serious question with, with the bath you said you were going to use, will that hurt the enameling you have already done to the piece? Um, no, most enamels will not react. Um, I have found that there's one or two colors that sometimes it will strip away like the shininess to them. But when it's fired again, um, it normally gets that back. So for the most part, no, most aren't reactive to the, to the Sparex bath. Also, we had Black Color Ironworks ask, so what is a Jess rant called? again question mark and can i request one of them big smiley face <laughs> i'm focusing very intently there i did it hooray i did not drop it i'm deciding if i <laughs> deciding i was going to add some extra little colorful pieces to it but i don't have tweezers out here i'm wondering if i want to take the risk what's the jazz range the Jess rant, Jessica Johns, according to Roy. <laughs> um, and I said earlier, I'm like, I don't know if I have any of those. <laughs> so, um, maybe you guys can suggest a topic. And if I hear a topic that I like that I want to rant about, I will give it a try. A, a jaunt, as Roy says. We can give it a go. Okay, I got to tell you all this. Jessica is such a sweetheart. She ha like she she really does not rant about anything. If she doesn't like something or if she doesn't like you, she's just like, "Oh. You'll never know." <laughs> just the way she is. So she doesn't have she doesn't have the mouthpiece like I do uh, when it comes to that. So she she gets all sorts of anxiety about um people asking her to do a Jessica jaunt because she has n <laughs> she, she doesn't know anything to be that riled up about. <laughs> so if you can find something a a subject of provocation <laughs> that you think might interest Jessica. Go ahead and drop it in the chat now. <laughs> okay. 
Um, yeah, I'm gonna try that. Let's see here. I'm gonna leave it sit there for a minute. I'm gonna come over and put my other piece in. There we go. The quicker the better. And my other <laughs> trivet. <laughs> Figure out where I'm going. I am going back to camera one. Sorry. I'm gonna try to clean my trivet that has a, that little bit of enamel stuck to the trivet with a bit of sandpaper. Ben Toom said, meeting her in person, I believe that. You're driving, Roy, question mark, lol. <laughs> That's it, my driving. What do, you, driving. what do you think about Roy's driving for Jessica's job? Um, sure, I can give that one a try. <laughs> uh, so Roy is a much better driver now than when we were dating. <laughs> I've heard about some very iffy stories back in the day. Um, I guess I could tell them my story. So, so I'll give you guys a little bit of the a little bit of the backstage here. Um, so when Roy and I met, um, we were both 16, and I was, I guess, semi rebellious. You could say, um, going through a semi rebellious stage. But anyway, um, so my parents were like, "You're you're not dating yet," and I thought differently. So I said, well, I'm, I'm going to meet a friend. Uh, I'll go with you, mom, to your appointment. And then afterwards, I'm going to go hang out with some friends. And she's like, oh, well, I'd like to meet your friends. And I'm like, no, I don't want you to meet them. <laughs> and so I'm going to go set this over here for one second, and I will continue. <laughs> you know why she didn't want you to meet them? <laughs> one brief intermission from the story. So, uh, yes, so I was going with my mom to her chiropractor appointment, and I had told um, Roy to meet me there. And we had met um, previously one time at, um, just one time, I was working at the North Pole as an elf. So uh, we met there, his sister was there um, working for, as a photographer for Santa. And so he was there with his mom and his aunt. So sorry, I, I kind of jumped my story. I'm, I'm giving you the back story to this before I give you the, the regular story. Um, so uh, again, we met at the North Pole briefly and he asked me, he's like, oh, can I have your number? And I said, why sure, you can have my number. And um, so then we called and talked for several hours and, and he asked me out on a date. And so I'm like, well, I don't know if my mom, my parents will let me because I'm not, <laughs> not technically supposed to be dating yet, but I think we could hang out. And so anyway, so I arranged where I could go with my mom to her chiropractor appointment and then go hang out with my friends afterwards, which my friend was Roy. Um, so, so I get out, I'm on the sidewalk after my mom's appointment. She wants to meet my friends and I'm like, no, I, do, I don't want you to meet my friends right now. And uh, so I started walking down the sidewalk. My mom started driving in her car. Well, it was a one-way road, so she had to turn and go around the block. So while she's turning and going around the block, Roy shows up in his car. So I hop in and I say, go, go, go. And so, <laughs> so he didn't know what was going on. He thought maybe I like just robbed a bank or something. Go, you got to add? <laughs> okay, so this is what really went down. She comes booking it from between two buildings. She had been running away from her mother and I didn't know she come around the side of this house r flat out running for my truck. I had an 81 Ford Bronco and uh, it, yeah, a lemon of a truck. But anyways, I was driving around this. So I come up and no sooner than I come to a stop, she comes booking it across the lawn and barrels into my vehicle and says, go, 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 go. And then yeah, so I punched it and took off, and then I found out about a block and a half later what we were running from, and it was her mother. And so then I slowed down before I got a traffic ticket. So there's the true story. 
<laughs> and so we, <laughs> we proceeded um, from him picking me up to we went to the movie theater uh, and we watched Mr. and Mrs. Smith, who was out in theaters then. And um, his, his mom comes over and says hello, but she's in a security guard suit. I'm like, <laughs> that freaked me out for a second. I'm like, oh, am I gonna get in trouble? Because I didn't know I didn't know it was his mom at first. Like I didn't <laughs> I didn't know what was going what was going on. But ended up his mom was a security guard at the mall at that time. So it was she interesting. Was <laughs> yeah. <laughs> About to do some hard time. <laughs> For running away from my mother. <laughs> some hard time. She was going to get a prison tattoo. <laughs> like a teardrop. She was going to do some hard time <laughs> with the security guard. <laughs> Making a citizen's arrest. <laughs> For running from her parents. <laughs> on this one. <laughs> In your curious way. Yes, I want to hear the comments, <laughs> what people are saying. Well, some people said Wiley Rook Blade Works. In some states, that's called kidnapping. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Also, we have, oh, I'm aware of putting her on the spot like that was priceless. And you were both 16 and at the North Pole. My text-to-speech can't keep up. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of funny stuff. Clam Smasher with a two euro super chat said that was incredibly wholesome to hear. <laughs> oh. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, by the way. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I'm not quite sure if we've told my mom yet this story. I think we have, but this could be the first time. So, so yeah, if she shows up in the live stream, hi mom. <laughs> that's, that's the truth. Now you know it. <laughs> Hello, Mama Harvey. I know you're. You might be in there somewhere <laughs> out here. So, <laughs> surprise. I did share the link on my personal. Um, Facebook page, so it wouldn't surprise me if there's a few family members in the crowd. <laughs> ben Toon said, sorry to bring up old crimes, Roy. My bad. <laughs> yeah, let's not go digging too deep into Roy's past. Um, <laughs> there, there are some skeletons there. <laughs> Man, I'm having to do a lot of mic switching tonight. I don't even think you do this much mic switching on a normal basis. No, Clam Smasher said, <laughs> at Christ Center Ironworks, British pound sterling. We fought against the implementation of the euro for a reason. <laughs> Smiley face. Well, I am sorry. Your British pound sterling. Good sir. I'll take it any way it comes. Here in the U.S., I'll just start calling them dollars. How's that sound? <laughs> we'll just start calling them dollars. I got six, 36 money. Yeah, we got we got doll hairs. Thank you. We had we had two doll hairs show up in there. <laughs> Let's go with that. Okay. Um, so I just got this green one, the one that has the back the screen. I got this one out of the um, Sparex bath. And uh, there's the scale had all turned like a kind of a reddish brown, and so it was fully, um, fully done cleaning. And I just scrubbed it down with the green uh, scrub pad, and um, so it's kind of a matte finish right now. But it's clean; it has all the scale off. And so this one, I am going to do a clear layer on, um, basically just a medium fusing clear. That way, um, that way, when I do my next layer. Um, they'll, it basically it preserves the color of the copper to being a color, like a copper look versus reacting with the other colors. Black Collar Ironworks said that was so worth getting gold membership. <laughs> Laughing, crying face. <laughs> Camera to Roy. Before I put the clear on there, 
I'm gonna go ahead and put this in. And you guys, I don't, you probably can't see down in there. Okay. Went a little slower with that one to be genteel. There's little, little glass seed beads in there. Um, if you've seen those, like for from uh, Indian Indian type jewelry, they use like those little tiny beads. If you get glass ones, uh, you can actually fire those into your designs. You just have to make sure they're not plastic, otherwise they'll just char and burn away. It is getting cold out here, ladies and gentlemen, and it is also 7-Eleven. Oh, thank heaven. <laughs> Clam Smasher said, you're forgiven, Roy, big heart. Thank you. Let's see here. Ben Toom said, I hold it against you, Roy. <laughs> and then let's see here. Camera 2, Roy, Strong Adventures, is yelling out at me in the comment section. So they're, they're trying to help me out by giving me advice when to go to cameras. And uh, so I love that. <laughs> You're all welcome for my awesome, awesome, might I add, Clicky Fingers McGee tonight. Yes, you're welcome. These digits can do other things besides blacksmith. <laughs> I better shut up now. They'll think that it's all going to my head. No. Strong's Adventures, thank you for being here, by the way. Billy Martin, Ozark Mountain Forge. By the way, I didn't get to say hello to you, so thank you for coming in and watching the stream this evening. Roy Evitz, thank you for being here as well. And yes, I am very uncomfortable without a hammer in my hand. Back to me. Are you still reading comments? Back to you. Back to me, okay. So kind of, um, as you guys are probably catching on here, I mean, it's fairly, um, steps are fairly basic and they just kind of get repeated throughout the design. Um, you, you know, you clean the copper, you apply your a layer of enamel, you dry it and then you fire it and then repeat. So you do that to the back and to the front and that can basically be done to something flat, something three-dimensional, um, the only thing to consider when working with three-dimensional pieces uh, is, again, um, how the trivet is going to hold the piece without being in contact with enamel, which I hear there's um, some spray stuff. I'm trying to remember the name of it. Zip, Z-Y-P. Um, I haven't bought any yet because it's like $54 a can, but they say um, that like a lot of people who work with glass, they'll use that on um, the surfaces they don't want the glass to stick to, and then things like trivets can actually go directly on it but i have not tried that yet so let's see here possum sauce said you look uncomfortable being the angel roy lol and actually what makes me most uncomfortable is the fact that i have to keep my mouth shut <laughs> for long periods of time that's unnatural for me it's very unnatural for me so just like Jessica having to do all the talking, that's very unnatural for her. So, um, but she's a she is a natural talent in many many ways, as you can clearly see before you. Just gonna get better. Said, too late. Already gone to the head, Roy. Yep, that's right. Good to see you here, by the way. And let's see here. Also, also possum sausage. I don't think I said hello to you yet this evening. Thank you for being here, sir. Great to have you. CU Metals asked, Jess, can you j can you add glitter to it at any point before firing? Sorry, did not give you a warning on that. Nope, not at all. I apologize. I just realized it was in there already long enough. <clears throat> um, yeah, the type of glitter I would recommend would be uh, the mica, because regular glitter, I believe, is mostly plastic, so it would just basically light on fire <laughs> and uh, leave little burn spots in your enamel. So um, yeah, I mean, buy mica. It's like $3 from, you can buy buy them for like $3 for different colors on uh, Etsy. So I plan on buying some of that eventually. Um, still trying to build up my stock. I, again, I went and purchased um, the kiln versus, uh, alternatively, I could have spent that money in building up my, my supplies and my enamels, but 
I was wanting to get into doing a little bit bigger projects than jewelry. So I just kind of applied all my funds into that. And then, um, and now at this point going forward, I'll start applying my funds into buying more enamels and more of the like little additive things you can do. Let's see here. Newt's Leather and Metal Smithy said a four-sided trivet would work great for those four-sided bowls. Uh. Okay. Yeah, I do have some little um, ones that I re recently purchased that were four-sided uh, for jewelry. And so probably we'll get into doing some of those for, for my bowls as well. I'm going to see. Yeah, that one's cooling off. This one, this one I technically need to go on that trivet. Can you go down sure. into that side there? Yeah. Oh. You need that to go on a trivet. Right? I need this to go on a trivet, but I can't use, I mean, I can set it on this tray to dry for now, but I have to remember to put it on the, on the trivet mm -hmm. before I fire that one. So. And when you bring something out, leave it up in that space. To right here in this yeah, area. In that area. Okay. So you can see it. Okay. Question came in from Roy Evitz, said, have you tried smashing colored, colored glass to make an enamel? I have, um, actually. I have, and we'll go back to camera one. My daughter um, likes doing mosaics, and so she had some little glass tiles and I'm like, I, I don't know what, um, I wasn't sure what type of glass they were, but I'm like, well, I could, I could just crush them up and give it a try and see if it works as lump. They call that um, lump enamel when it's in chunks. And so I have a mortal or mortar and pestle. I think that's what that's called, um, made from stone that I used to crush it up. And I did, I crushed um, a couple different colors up I just have them in little baggies and the lumps are in different sizes and um, I used them in a project recently. So I might, I might use a few of them on the front of this bowl that I'm working on. Let's see here. So yeah, I think that was the last question. Um, I do want to take and acknowledge Keith Whatever of Triforge Creations. Just wanted to say hello to you, sir. Glad to have you in the house. And uh, let's see here. Let's see here. Randy from Newt's Leathersmithy said, yes, but then Roy has a plasma cutter plasma table. He can cut them out as a double slot so they can slide together. Possum Sausage said, glad I got to stop by for a while, but unfortunately I have to go getting packed up for a vacation. Good night all. Good night, Possum Sausage. Glad to have you here. At Cry Center I Works from Clan Smasher said, don't lie, the baggie is full of crystal meth. <laughs> I've seen Breaking Bad! Exclamation <laughs> point. Oh no! <laughs> well, don't say that too much. <laughs> It definitely is not. Trust me. We've I've been clean since eighty eight, and Jessica's been clean since eighty nine, when we were born. That's right. <laughs> that is right. So I just had um, had a little chip break off right here at the edge, on the brown. Um, so I'm deciding. I think I will repair that. I might not get this particular bowl done tonight, um, but if that happens, <clears throat> the way to repair the enamel um, is to take whatever color it was in the area where it chipped off and um, to just reapply the clear fire and apply a thick coat it just in that area and then kind of blend a little bit around it to blend it in and then um, it'll re here there I think what happened is when I was cleaning I might have pressed a little hard and flexed the metal because it is thin metal. Question from Bill Carnes. Well, first off, hello, Bill. Good to have you in the house this evening watching this stream. 
Whenever I try enameling in my propane forge, the glass pops off when it cools. Is the forge too hot? Question mark. Um, so depending on what your, so normally the glass can pop off for a couple of different reasons. Um, did he say what type of metal he was using? He did not. He did not. My guess is you're probably using steel. And you can tell me in the comments if you're not, if you're using something different. But if you were using steel, um, the reason that the glass chipped off is because the expansion rate is different between the steel and um, the enamel. And so one will cool down faster or at a different rate than the other. And so as it's cooling, um, it just breaks off. And that's what I had with some of the steel flowers um, that I enameled. It was, it was doing the same thing. It was just chipping off, especially uh, it seemed a lot like near the edges that it was having that problem. Um, but another, a few other reasons that can cause the enamel to chip off is um, if, if it didn't get if it was heating too slowly, which probably isn't the problem in a, in a kiln, that what can happen is the scale layer can build up um, before the metal fuses between the enamel and um, the metal. He said quarter inch copper. Quarter inch copper, okay. And then, so then the other thing that it could have been is it could have been the copper wasn't clean enough um, when you applied the enamel. Uh, so the way to do, the way to rectify that is um, just to clean it really good with um, like a scouring pad like I have just uh, like I have here um, and a, even a little bit of soap and then you just rinse it real good afterwards um, and then there is there could have been one other reason and it could have been if you're you said quarter inch um, so depending on what you're using to put it in and out of the kiln with uh, or in, with your forge um, if it was flexing the metal at all like a little bit um, then it can cause it to chip off and I had that happen when I was last enameling, um, I was lifting, I was using my copper tongs here, these big heavy ones, and I was working with the same thickness plate, but it was a bigger bowl, it was a six inch bowl. And I was picking up it at the corner, and when I was lifting it up out of like the bath, the angle I was, I was holding it at was applying too much and it was flexing at the corner and I'd have the animal break off just at the corner. Um, so that could be another cause. Yes, go ahead and go over to camera two. I think I can get this bowl off the trivet. I'll show it off. Let's see, here is, it's been stuck to. If you gently tap it, it'll break loose, but <clears throat> this is the design for this one. This one's finished. Um, I did the little anvil stencil in the middle, and I enameled around it. And don't give it that more so the light's don't. not shining right at it. Ah. The other way. The, the other way down. where it's shadowed. Okay. Ah. I'll just hold it. There you go. Is that good? Yeah, perfect. So um, the stencil was right there in the center. I sifted lightly black enamel around it so you can see the outline of it. And then these little dots of color, those are the glass seed beads. So this one is done. So all I'll really have to do to this one to complete it is to grind the back with the alundum stone. And that one we are giving away tonight. Uh-oh, did you all hear that? That one with the anvil in the middle, we will be giving away tonight. Isn't that cool? Also, I have found out that we have a bunch of old fogies in our, <laughs> in our membership. No, they said, geez. 88 I graduated in 88 so everyone's everyone's commenting and I don't think I've seen too many people who said that they were born after 88 other than one person in 1996 so oh, yeah. <laughs> so it's funny to see everyone's comments so <laughs> thank you all hopefully I'm doing okay I'm trying to give Jessica ample times to talk and uh you know but I do acknowledge the chat. That's why you can see me smiling over here and nodding my head. That means I'm answering you with my eyes. <laughs> with your eyes. Back to me. As I said, eyes. I just echo. Okay. Ooh. I am hearing little flecks happening. That is not a good sound. I'm coming back. I'm hearing a little popping sound right now coming from the kiln. I'm thinking... 
that's telling me that the enamel is coming off. <laughs> but we'll see once it comes out. Um, I did have once before where it was making that sound and then, um, but the enamel didn't come loose. It just must have caused like little micro cracks. And then once it came back to heat, it just fused it back on. So hopefully the enamel's staying on that one. Sometimes things happen and you have to work with it, so. <laughs> Tell more about the giveaway. Tell more about the giveaway, okay. Um, well, since it's done, I mean, do you want to, uh, let's see, should we say a catchphrase? I think we said last time we were gonna make them do a catchphrase. So maybe I'll make mention of the catchphrase and then after I pull the next one out, that's when we'll draw the name. How does that sound? What do you think? Oh, well, this one's good. Do what about um, enameling is cool? <laughs> we'll do that as our catchphrase. So if you want to get entered to win the bowl, uh, you have to type in enameling is cool as your entry to um, have a chance at being entered to win that bowl. And uh, here in a few minutes, after I pull this next bowl out, uh, we will draw the winner for that. So <laughs> Roy's going to get to see how the comments fly. <laughs> I'm going to pick one at random that's flying by at the moment. So, because I don't know how to scroll this thing. I don't see the scroll bar at all. Yeah, you have to resize the window. It's a little small. I, I have to resize. She says I have to resize something, gentlemen. I have to resize something so I can flick the thingy, the Duma flicker. I have no clue. So, I have no clue what she wants me to do here. So, but no. No, I'll just, I'll just. It's not, the chat's not going too rapid, so I'll just uh, pick one of these. Back to you. Back to me. Sorry, I know I I'm stood up there for a second. Enameling school. Oh, enameling is cool. That's right. Let me peek in the kiln and see how close we are here. Let's see, it looks like a little bit longer maybe about 30 more seconds. Just getting my workstation tidied up. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> oh man, here it goes. Yep, a bunch of enameling is cools is flying by here. So, do we just want to pull somebody at random right now? No, the first just give it one second. This is Okay, hold on. Let me go over to the anvil cam. Got to give me a call where I need to be at. All right, here we go. Out she comes. And, ooh, I don't know if you guys can see that or not. See the golden color on this? Uh, right now, the um, just like just like steel, well, yeah, you guys know about the, the colors color ranges that the copper will go through, but this is at the top of the color range that copper goes through before um, it just goes back to um, just a copper color. And so if you pull it out at just the right time, it will actually keep the golden color. But I'm just gonna let that cool off and let Roy draw the name. And if we're still at camera two, I'll show that off one more time. Yep. Shut off one more time. Show the angles. It's black on the back. The front is white with black. Some colorful forge color dots. Like just forge, just imagine forge welding. <laughs> we'll call that the forge welding. Forge welding bowl. I so. take it with you and go sit down. <laughs> All right. All right, I'm gonna draw a name now. I'm just going to put my finger on screen and hopefully that will stop somebody somewhere and I'm not paying attention to it at all. I'm looking off the side, looking off the side so I can be fair and bam. Uh, let's see here, we have, oh, oh no, it moved away. I don't know, it didn't stop. Hold on, let me try that again. <laughs> um, let's see here and go. I have Stephen Watkins. Enameling is cool. Stephen Watkins. Congratulations, brother. You won the little copper bowl there, Jessica just made with the uh Yeah, Stephen Watkins. Congratulations. So everyone give a hand clap to let Stephen Watkins know that he won with the enameling is cool comment on that part there. 
No. <laughs> oh, a little surprise giveaway there for everyone. They weren't even expecting it. Yeah. Moment. I'll take my trivet off of here. Ah. Probably easier to pick it up. This one's the one at the back. The back is green. I'm gonna set that aside. Okay. Go let that cool a little further, and then I'm going to put in my brown, the one where the back is brown, and I'm doing the repair in one spot. So I just have enamel in the one spot. All right. Oh, I did not look at the temperature before I put that in. I'm sorry, it all climbed back up, but it was right at 1300 degrees when I put it in. So the alarm will probably go off, but that's all right. Everybody's been doing so well now. They've been so well behaved. Yeah. Can we give away hmm? Well, I, it's not done yet. <laughs> it has to be done so they know what they're getting. <laughs> Well, if it well that one like that one like I said is going to the to um someone specific, but this this brown one when it's done, yeah, we'll give it away. <laughs> oh, okay, I can tell. I can tell. Um, yeah, so this this next one that I'm gonna be working on, the one where I did the clear, uh, like I said, if you use clear or transparent um, enamels, you can actually see any texture you had underneath. Um, which is pretty cool if you're working with copper and you want to give it like a heavy wood grain texture or the pebble texture, you know, lots of hammer texture. Or you could even stamp, stamp, you know, into the metal um, and then enamel over that. When you're working with the clear enamel or a transparent color, you'll be able to see that, um, which is pretty cool. I think there's a specific technique. I think it's called Champlevé, um, and it's specifically working with... Um, textured or engraved um, surfaces because what happens is where it's deeper it gets a darker color even like if you're just going with like say a solid blue all the way across the whole piece it'll be darker colored in the recesses of the piece where it's been like engraved and so it's really cool i think that's called champ levé but i haven't played with that in yet we have another great question from cu metals there was a, there was another question that I, I missed. It was somebody who was in California asking about the minimum thickness of glass to metal, uh, enamel on silver. Sorry I didn't get to that one. But CU Metals was before the giveaway I asked could the creaking or cracking be from the loose glass that was in the kiln? Question mark. Um, I don't think so. I think any little bits of loose glass that were in there they wouldn't be able to cool, I mean, they're staying hot. So, and when it's hot, it's not cracking. The enamel cracks when um, normally, well, it, it, it can crack when there's a temperature change, but I don't think the temperature change of just the door opening briefly while I'm setting a piece in there would cause any enamel that's in the kiln to solidify instantly, so. To answer Wiley Rook Blade Works, I wanted to say at Christ Iron Arts, did the package I sent arrive okay? Yes, it did, Wiley Rook Blade Works. It arrived just fine. Um, we actually went to the post and got it today. So thank you very much for sending that out. You'll be seeing it shortly in other live streams. <laughs> okay. Um, so I'm going to get my colors laid out for this next process. Uh, I'm going to be applying four different colors at the same time. So, um, and if you've wondered what these pieces of paper I'm using here are for, um, I just use one color per sheet of paper and that prevents um, any little glass particles that might get left behind on the paper from mixing with, uh, you know, the other colors when I go to pour a specific color back into its jar. So I'm going to be working with grass green, uh, goldenrod yellow, um, also my red. That one is called flame red. I used those when I made our uh, enameling keychains for our, you guys might remember that, um, 
think did I do that? I think I did it fall of last year, and there's still a few left. I did some like logoed enameled keychains for our company, and I used um, the red and the yellow like in a uh, ombre kind of gradient. So, and then, mm -hmm. real quick question that I missed earlier. Moa Sayas said hi from Los Angeles. I hope I got that name right. I have question. How many millimeter is the thinnest depth of the enamel to stick to the silver? Um, I'm afraid I'm not. I, I don't know the specifics of the thickness. Um, the, I mean, I'm literally applying like what would be considered like a dusting. Like it, the consistency is about that of powdered sugar. Uh, the metal I'm using is 22 gauge, um, but the amount of glass I'm applying is very, very thin. Maybe, um, you know, I don't know, maybe a little thicker than a thickness of a hair. I'm, I'm, I don't know. I haven't tried measuring it before, so. Also, Bar Run Forge, just want to acknowledge you. I don't think I got that message that you sent. Um, email last week he sent with a few questions for me. I'm not sure if I've got that or Jessica didn't copy on copy me on that. So if you could resend that email, that'd be great. And also just gonna get better. Just dropped a two dollar super chat just because love this stream. Make sure everybody gives him a hand clap there in the comment section. Well, thank you. I'm glad you are enjoying the stream. <laughs> see here I'm what I'm doing is I'm getting my all my enamels and their um, little sifters that way I'll be able to go from one to the next so I'm gonna go over and check the bowl real quick and did I leave a bowl in the kiln yes I did so let's go ahead and grab that out let's see how that one turned out that was the brown okay oh the cat just the cat is tripping over everything yeah yeah, again with this really shiny metallic look. Interesting. Go lay down, Milk Bed. Go lay down. Let's let that cool. And then um, that one came up with a very interesting mm -hmm. texture. I, mean, I think what it did is it did get micro cracks, but then it healed when it got fully up to heat. So, all right, back to, we'll go back over here. Gonna brush off the edges real quick. <laughs> I'm gonna give them some food. Okay. I'm gonna try to do this real lightly because I would not want to have any more injuries to my enamel. And again, I'm just trying to knock off any loose scale that might be on the edges that way it doesn't fall into the enamel and get mixed into the jar. Um, all right, there we go. So as you guys can see on this piece, um, that copper color you see there is just straight underneath the clear enamel. And I'm going to do this piece like I do the others. Um, now one other thing I have to do before I paint on the clear fire is I have the selection of uh, little leaves that I collected a few weeks ago. They're kind of dry now, so some of the edges curled a little bit. Um, and I'm going to pick which ones are kind of the flattest and have the best edges on them. And I'm going to set them with which color I want them to be with. So I'm going to, some of these are maple leaves. Actually, a lot of them are. And let's see, this biggest one here might be a little big. Basically, what I'm going to use it as a, as a template. Eh, yeah, I think that one's a little big. I'll go with them. Um, See, mostly maple leaves, I think. I missed out on so much chat. Did you? <laughs> Let's see here. Do I hear a dog? Question mark. Someone says someone's a jerk. There's, there's a lot of clappy hands and things. I hope I didn't miss anything it's super important. Randy said muscles are required. Intelligence not expected. <laughs> I don't know what that means. Oh. Roy telling Jess to go lay down. <laughs> Kid KV said. 
uh, let's see here. Sorry if anyone was talking to me in chat. My text to speech engine broke. <laughs> Three hearts all from Black Collar Ironworks. Oh man, that's so funny. You guys are great. Gordon Farmer says, Roy, when when you installing flux cannons? And then somebody had also asked earlier, when am I installing enamel cannons? <laughs> No, I don't. I don't think enamel cannons would be a great idea at all. No, and I don't know if any of you all saw. I am wearing pants for the stream. Congratulations! <laughs> it's all back to you. <laughs> okay. <coughs> well, congratulations, Roy, on the pants. <laughs> Just kidding. All right. What I'm doing now is I am putting my leaves up against the bowl. And then I am sprinkling the enamel around it. And so once this fires, you guys will be able to see this really good, the effect I'm going for here. I'm kind of just hovering it above the top of the surface of the bowl. Yeah, I figured probably not, but I'm gonna do a different color in each corner. I'll give it an interesting effect. Justin Ray, got to run. Love the stream and God bless. God bless you, Justin Ray. Thanks for stopping in. Uh, glad to have you here. Bar Run Forge, who's a big boy? That's me. <laughs> Only because it's cold, Roy. Roy Everett said. <laughs> um, I'd also like to say this real quick. Thank you, everyone, for being here. Thank you, guys. You guys are awesome. Um, we really do love this community. And it really is a great community. Thank you all for being so helpful and in inviting new people in as well. And uh, we do appreciate that. Another two doll hairs from Clam Smasher, but they aren't yoga pants. <laughs> We've had a talk about this, Clam Smasher. We have had a talk about this. <laughs> yes, and we can please. I'll get this one set up here. You might be able to see a little bit on the edge there. I'm yeah, not putting it in there yet. That. That's cool. But I used those small leaves yeah. and then went around them. Kind of like in some fall colors, you know, because it's that time of year. Got a question. Rob Huff asks, can you use enamel over tempered copper without, without losing the temper colors? You cannot so if i believe you're referring to like the rainbow colors um and the copper gets much hotter than in the kiln than it does with those colors um on there so no you won't be able to keep keep those colors um if you were trying to do something where like and i thought about this before like if i was doing a bowl and it was thicker metal um, where i wanted to do the rainbow colors on one side and enamel the other side the way I would do it is I would enamel, like say the front was going to be enameled, I would do all my enameling on that. And then on the back side, after I was done enameling, I'd polish it and then just torch, um, torch color it to bring out the rainbow colors. And it's at a low enough a temperature, I don't think that it would affect the enamel on the front. Yeah, Black Collar Iron Works with $5 said, at least you're not wearing the buttless chaps you usually wear. <laughs> Three hearts, bro. <laughs> Hey, I get sweaty in the shop in the summer. <laughs> oh, brother, it's getting that time of evening. It is 744 after all. I think that's, what's that? That's, that's almost official adult swim territory, isn't it? Well, when they kick all the kids out of the pool. Okay, she had nothing else to say, so 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 I will uh, comment here. Moesiah said, "Thank you." A human hair is between 0 0.04 and 0 0.01 millimeter, so it is less than the length of the millimeter, less than a tenth of a millimeter. 
giving you some facts. Thank you, by the way, for repeating comments or questions that you have. Uh, that does help me out this evening, so greatly appreciate it. Red Beards Forbes, good to have you in the house this evening as well. Thank you for being here. The camera two. We're camera two and we're on you. All right. Go ahead and set this in. Been extremely fortunate this evening not to have dropped anything. My balance must be not, not too bad. Wood, yeah, I know. Ah, uh, there's no wood. Wooden beam. Doo -doo -doo. Okay. <laughs> so let's see. I'm gonna examine this one to see how it went when I fixed up the patch. So yeah. So it was right there, and that covered it back up. So now I can clean clean off the front and enable the front. Back to camera one. Daniel Crawford said, learning new stuff here. Thanks, Roy, for having Miss Jessica on the live stream. Mr. Crawford, sir, you are awesome and you are welcome. And welcome to the stream, sir. Good to see you here. Okay. <laughs> yeah, um, good to have you, Daniel. Yeah, I think uh, trying new things is great. I think it's always good to um, have that willingness and the openness to, to do that. And uh, a few weekends ago, I went and um, went with our oldest daughter and went to a um, silk, silk marbling, making a marbled silk scarf. And so that was, that was really interesting and I enjoyed trying it. And um, it's like, oh, well, it's, it's fun to try something without like, you know, to try it once, even if, um, if it's not something you plan on doing a whole bunch repeatedly. So. I had a good time doing that, and there's there's some pictures over on Instagram if uh, anybody hasn't dropped in lately. like to say good day to Down Under Farm and Forge. Thank you for dropping by the stream, sir. Uh, good to have you here. Farm and Forge. Sounds like a new name, unless I might be mistaken. Mm -hmm. For those of you who don't know, uh, Down Under Farm and Forge, he's got a YouTube channel. Uh, I believe you can click on his uh, icon there or search him out on YouTube. Uh, i just a recent subscriber to him, subscribing to all the Aussies I know to try to see where they are at. Also, Roy Everts had sent $5 Oz, uh, Australian, I think. Anyways, he said, it's only a concern when Roy wears the buttless chaps back to front. <laughs> or if Jessica catches camera number two at the wrong moment. Oh, hilarious. Oh, nobody's brought up the, the poopery <laughs> joke this time. But we were recently gifted with some poopery. <laughs> so... It was, it's been lovely, thank you. <laughs> See here. Strong's Adventure says, there is the beeping again. Roll your pizza rolls are done in the microwave. <laughs> Gordon Farmer's Forge says, we should have more Jess streams. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it gives me all of the comments. Let's go ahead and go to camera two. Right, camera number two. I know everything just kind of looks very black and gray, but it will change. We'll let it cool. Mm. It up a bit <laughs> oh, I can. Mm -hmm. Hold it up a bit more. Can you see it from there? Yeah, just a little bit. That it's is, not that impressive. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Slow, it's slowly starting to change, too. It's forever colors. So on the one where the back is metallic, it's coffee brown, it's supposed to be. I think on the front, I'm going to do... What did I decide? Recently got in one of my new colors here. I'll probably harvest blue. Yep. I'm going to put some Harvest Blue on there. Ooh, 
My turn? Ah, my turn to speak. So, Down Under Farm in Ford said, Mate, you stopped by my horrid live and gave me a hero moment. <laughs> hey, I'm glad to just bring another fellow Smith out there. Um, some smiles. I'm glad that, glad that pepped you up there. That's, that's a good thing. Uh, let's see here. Ali Kute said, WTF is going on here. Thank you for abbreviating that. Uh, we appreciate that for the whole YouTube sensors there. I appreciate it. Uh, we are enameling this evening. My wife is doing an enameling demonstration. Usually we do a live forging demonstration on Friday nights, but this is one of the off nights where we do uh, um, some things where maybe Jessica might get in here or just a little catch up stream. So, yeah, there was five weeks this month. So, there you have it. That's what we're doing. We're doing a little copper enameling this evening. Join in on the chat and have some fun. Let's see here. Let me read some other comments here. Repeat comment. My mother and I enjoyed watching you both. It's the least I can do. It goes for a good cause as well. Black Collar Ironworks, thank you very much. Um, it really does. It really does bless Jess and I to know that, you know, we're at least entertaining sometimes and then also informative um, with teaching and stuff. I mean, we try our best to get that type of information out, get as much information out there for people as we can um, with just different processes. And it's all of the great community around us like you that supports us and allows us to be able to do that because we don't make the most popular YouTube content out there. We really don't. Um, I could be a Roy rant for another day, but it is from donations like your guys's and all the super chats and things like that is what makes all of our giveaway streams possible. And it's what allows me to have more time to say no to some different jobs to focus on doing teaching of things that I think matter and of blacksmithing skills we don't want to lose for generations and generations again. We don't want to become a generation of smiths that all we do is Damascus and Kniff work. You know, we've already lost a good portion of knowledge out there, and a lot of those old timers are, um, you know, dying off, unfortunately, that were part of that original rediscovery um, group of old iron work. So I hope to continue to take and preserve that here on this channel. And uh, you all are helping me to do that. So I really can't say thank you enough uh, for all the support. I know Jessica and I uh, both believe that wholeheartedly. So again, thank you guys very much. You all are awesome. Let me see if I can get you a question. Or are you ready to comment something, Jess? Yeah, go ahead and ask that question. Um, all right, I'll look for a comment here. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Keith, whatever, try Forge Creations and rant, rant, rant. <laughs> I'm trying not. This is Jessica's stream this evening. Let's see here. Uh, da, da, da. Okay, I don't see any current questions, so I'm going to turn it over to you. Um, so what I'm doing here is I put down my Harvest Blue color, uh, opaque, and then afterwards I sprinkled some of the lumps of glass that I had broken up. And um, so it's basically it's just one layer. I put, you know, I haven't fired it in between. And then when this goes in, uh, it'll just get, it'll go on a little longer so that the lumps can um, kind of lose the sharpness on them and fuse as well. I'm going to put this on for here. Camera two. My gloves on. Mm -hmm. This one needs to dry a bit. I'm gonna put it up here. And I will show you guys this bowl. I'm not sure if the colors are still darkening or not, um, or if there's a little bit of a reaction here. This color was yellow. You can see a little bit of yellow there. So I'm not sure if it's still color cooling off or if um, or if the um, clear was maybe a little thin there. I'm not sure yet, but this is how it turned out. You can see the outlines of the maple leaves and these other two kinds of leaves. I'm not sure. Beach, maybe? Beach. 
And then on the back, it's still that vibrant green color. So, all right, I'll go back to my workstation. Um, so I think, <clears throat> I think we're on to the very last firing now. So yeah, just waiting for a few minutes and, and then we'll be able to pop it in there. So let's see here. Uh, we, we had a question. Uh, da, 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 da. I can't see that. The blue is opaque question mark from Ben Toombs. And then let's see here. And da, da, da. Michael Hunt asked, what is the stuff you brush on the enamel before putting powder on it? Yes, um, Ventum's opaque just refers to not see-through. So it's just a solid color um, versus transparent. That's the one that you can see through. And the stuff that I'm brushing on is um, it's half clear fire and half um, uh, half water, just um, not tap water, but uh, distilled water. And basically it's almost um, like a thin glue that just holds the enamel in place on um, three dimensional objects. Um, let's see here, we have a question, Strong Adventures. How big is the kiln? Can Jess enamel something like a cast iron skillet or pot? Um, so my kiln, I think my interior dimensions are roughly eight inches square um, in every direction. Uh, so it'd be too small to do um, a cast iron skillet. I tried to do a um, six inch bowl, a square one, and it was, it was a little tight getting it in there. Um, I actually had one of the corners make contact with um, the door of the kiln it left like a little mark where the some of the enamel had melted onto the door so um, about five a five and a half inch object in my kiln is about uh, the maximum maybe six if I'm real careful Moa Sias said thank you so much for the information do you know anything about Neil 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 enamel enamel Ugh. N-I-E-L-L-O, enamel. I've not heard of that before. It's all you. All me? Okay. okay. Um, you want me to talk? <laughs> no, you're fine. I think uh, we'll actually go over and, and go ahead and put it in. I don't know if you can see any of the lumps, how what they currently look like from you that angle. No, that okay. Just at the wrong yeah, gotcha. All right. <laughs> so now we're at. So now we're basically at the hurry up and wait stage. Uh, she's getting at. She's at the end of all the artistic pieces, and they're they're finishing up one at a time here. I am. Um, I'll show you this to you guys over here. Um, this is the Thompson enamel chart. So these are like this page here. Um, these are like all their opaque colors. I think there's 90, uh, no, 85 of them. Um, so these are all their solid colors. And then they have um, tilted away from the light. Tilted away. Tilt down. down. Like, yeah, there we go. There. And then the following page after that is all of the um, transparent colors on which, and they actually show these on little um, grids of four because they show what it looks like. Um, one of the little squares represents white. One of them represents flux, which is just clear. Um, one represents silver and the other one represents copper. So if you're trying to get, um, so with the transparents, if you're going for, um, you know, a certain color. Sometimes you might use white underneath it, or you might just do it straight on the copper, or you might do it on a layer of clear. And any of three of those could give you a different color um, from just one certain enamel. To answer some comments here, um, Corey Shire, good to have you in the house this evening. Bohr, Bohr asked, how much does a three-foot ostrich birdbath weigh? Well, 
all in total it'll weigh about 40 pounds um, it's about 40 pounds of copper uh, or so um, that it varies a little bit depending on how much you hammer out the piece um, because it's stretching it you hammer it square first and then uh, if you put texture into the plate and then you scribe it and cut it round afterwards uh, so it really depends on how much how efficient you are at moving the material every time you anneal the copper you copper has a tendency to lose a lot of mass um, to oxidization it rapidly oxides pretty quick so on a three foot diameter bird bath bowl you're going to lose um, you can lose probably five between five and ten percent of its weight um, just to scale if you're not careful with your heats so like if you look if you've seen earlier when Jessica was clearing off all that scale off them small bowls, imagine flakes like that, but like 10 times thicker um, on a large piece, like an, you know, say eighth inch thick piece that's three feet in diameter. Um, so you do lose anywhere from, like I said, to about five to 10% of the material mass. Um, if if you're not careful with your heats and uh, your annealing heats and forgings, no, it's a lot of fun. It's 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 a balance, but yeah, it'll be a, right around 40-ish pounds or so. Um, the whole feature will probably be somewhere in the neighborhood of 60, 70 pounds on, on top. It's probably 70 pounds, closer to 70 pounds. Okay, I think it's probably ready to get out. We'll go on over. Actually, I'm going to open it and take a quick peek so I can see how melted the lumps are. Yep, those are good and ready to come out. So, go ahead and pull this. And you might be able to see some of those lumps in there. Okay, I'll wait till it cools off. That's right. Or I might be able to tilt it while it's on the little tray. No. Nope. I will wait. <laughs> Said I will wait. So let me let me answer some questions real quick. Um, okay, Corey Shire, you said your new name will be Desert Forge and Ironworks. That's how you were here earlier. Well, good to know that. I think I knew that somewhere. Um, let's see here. What else? So while we wait for things to finish up from Jess's point of view, how did you two meet? Roy was an elf, if I remember correctly, <laughs> from Heath Miller. <laughs> no, Jessica was the elf, and I and I was the naughty child that asked her for her <laughs> number <laughs> to get me in good with Santa. There we go. That's that's how that's how we'll go with that one. So <laughs> maybe I should answer Heath. Maybe I should answer like I did when you're here. And I say, this time, this time I was the elf. <laughs> it's just this time, though. <laughs> yeah, sometimes that's not the greatest answer. Like, that, the only time. <laughs> Neil Graham, is that why you love Christmas so much? I actually loved Christmas long before I found Jessica, but she just happened to be the spicy little gumdrop on top of the Christmas cake <laughs> or whatever. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying. I don't have enough coffee in me right now to give intelligible responses. <laughs> oh, but no. No, it's, it's funny. We get to tell everybody we met at the North Pole, and everybody takes a step back for a second. And it's great. Sometimes I leave people with no context. And that just makes it so much better. Okay. You trying to show? I was just seeing if I could loosen it just yet here. Really did not. Okay. Yep. This here is how this one's turned out. I think the lumps are still cooling a little, so they may darken just yet. But you can see how that gave it an interesting texture. A um, couple different colored uh, lumps. I used a light blue, a dark blue, and a, a green. So this is, this bowl is complete. And 
oh, and yes, in the back, ooh, I nearly dropped it there. It kept that interesting, very metallic look. It's kind of like earthy, earthy tones and stuff. So yes, so what do you think to, um, which one do you think we should give away, Roy? Go do you think we should? Cams. I know. Okay. <laughs> so we can see you. Right now they're just watching the Paragon. <laughs> right now they're just watching the Paragon. Okay. <laughs> Um, yes, so which one, which one of the two do you think we should um, say for the unnamed person? And which one do you think we should give away? Hmm. Hmm. Let's see here. Um, I think, I think you are wanting the leaf one to go to mm -hmm. the special, right? Yeah. So I would say the lumpy one let's give the lumpy one away the artistically done one <laughs> so who's who is ready for another quick little giveaway of some of jessica's artwork here so oh yeah and you gotta put a christmas tree on the end the catchphrase is going to be christmas is coming with a christmas tree on the end christmas tree emoji Let's do that. <laughs> oh, I love that. Um, let's see here. Uh, Black Collar Ironwork said, okay, I'm back. I just broke my headset. Well, the mic still working this run, the audio to the television. Oh, well, he had some technical issues. Sorry, Black Collar Ironworks. You were not able to use your <laughs> speak to chat thing going on. All right, again. The catchphrase for the blue bowl with the lumps in the middle. I don't know how else to say that. Extra special <laughs> peaks or glass chunks or I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how you want to say it. Very artistically done bowl. Um, the catchphrase is Christmas is coming for anybody who wants to get in on that with a Christmas tree emoji on the end. So. <laughs> so. And uh, again, thank you all for being here this evening. Thank you, everybody, for uh, hanging out with us. Um, just, yeah, best, best dang family on the Internet a guy and a gal could ask for. So thank you guys for being here. So I'll give you guys a chance to uh, uh, start chatting it up, and we will draw a name at random. All right. <laughs> Yeah, thank you everybody for joining us this evening. And I know we ran over a bit, uh, probably by about 45 minutes by the time the stream's oh. over. An hour? Oh, well, hour a whole hour. Minutes. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, but thanks for, for joining us. And even though it's um, not exactly blacksmithing, for checking it out anyway. And um, hopefully the information I provided you was um, helpful. You know, and I, if, if anybody does try enameling, I look forward to seeing how your projects turn out you know you can always email us a picture or tag us on instagram that'd be really cool to see and um, again if you're curious on the tools and all the stuff i use um, the links are down in the description as well as uh, links to additional enameling videos on uh, several different topics on enameling so check those out yeah all right so let me go to all right, we are back to my mic. I am going to draw somebody at random here. I am not going to look at the screen. I am going to look over here and I'm going to try to stop it on in whoever's name I land on. That is who's going to get the spicy bowl with with lumps, whatever it is there. <laughs> All right, and ready, set three, two, one. Robert Shell, Robert Shell, Christmas is coming Christmas with a Christmas tree. <laughs> Robert Shell, Schnell Shell, I think it's Shell. Pretty sure it's Robert Shell. Yep, Robert Shell. Congratulations, you are the winner. So everybody, give Robert Shell a hand clap. Also, as always, you guys need to get with us. Um, anybody who's won this evening, you've got to take and get get with us in the. Um, I don't know if I included that information. Well, you didn't include that in the description. Just contact us through our website. Uh, email us so we can get your address so we can ship it out to you, um, and we'll love to do that. So, congrats to everybody, and again, like I said, uh, Robert Shell won that bowl. 
and Stephen Watkins earlier had won the Anvil Bowl. So again, congrats, congratulations, and uh, that is awesome. Sure. <clears throat> Um, yeah, so our next live stream, which sadly I forgot to um, schedule it out, but I will get that um, rectified soon. Uh, our next live stream is next Friday. That one will be a forging live stream, so make sure to catch us then. Um, I'm not sure what exactly Roy has planned on forging or even if he has it figured out yet, but it'll be something. It'll be in the forge. <laughs> so um, join us then, and uh, thank you for joining us for an awesome live stream. Yeah, so for our for our next live stream, I, obviously it's going to be a giveaway live stream. I got some awesome things um, to give away as well. It won't be the Anvil giveaway live stream. That will be the second live stream of the month since we'll be in November. And yeah, Christmas is coming, so I'm getting more and more excited about that. I love giving stuff away. So um, yeah, so I don't know. You'll have to stay tuned for the giveaway items. You have to be in the you have to be in the stream. Um, that'll be next Friday night at 5 p.m. Eastern Time, Eastern Standard Time, to 7 p.m.-ish. <laughs> we'll just say ish now, seeing how far we can go with it there. And then, um, let's see here, as far as the project, if I can get it done, I've got a lot of file work and things I have to get done, uh, prep work to continue on our hacksaw frame. So I'm hoping to get some time this upcoming week to work on that. Uh, but as I said, I have a crazy mass load of orders, so I might have to actually work on one of those customer orders in the stream, and uh, that'll just be based upon what we get to um, when we get there. So, so sky is kind of the limit. I hope to be finishing the saw blit, the, the saw frame, but we'll see how we can do there. Just going to get better. Thank you for the two dollars to help with the shipping. Greatly appreciate that. I greatly appreciate everyone's you know support the stream thank you all so much for all the kind super chats all the kind words thank you for sharing these streams thank you for sharing our channel and supporting traditional iron work um we do really appreciate it so shall i leave you with final thoughts jess do you have any jessica johns to go on down the road yeah. say goodbye though i could be the last one to say goodbye i get the last word this time good night everyone <laughs> 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 I don't know how to stop the stream. <laughs> oh, hold on. She's going to have to come help me. Jessica, help. <laughs> she thought she was going to have the last word, but uh, oh, yes. good, good night, everyone. Thank you all so much for being here. God bless you all, and uh, stay safe.